Hey, what's going on, everybody? This is my guide to speedrunning to Peng 2. This is going to be covering the new game 80% unrestricted category, meaning that we can use any and all glitches, out of bounds, movement tech, whatever we want to beat the game as fast as possible. So if that's not your thing, you can check out the restricted category over on speedrun.com. But for this guide, we're going to be using a lot of really cool stuff that is a little unintuitive. I'm going to be showing you how to do it. I'll be showing you the triggers that you get hit along the way. So they're a little hard to know. And also in the bottom left hand corner, I do have my mouse and keyboard input display. Keep in mind that I use pretty customized keys. So for example, I use ESDF for my movement. Uh, and we'll go over all the, the things that you need to know here in just a second. As we're recording this on August 1st of 2023, all the tricks are done on the current patch of the game. We don't know if there's going to be a patch that will take some of these skips out or any of the movement tech. So if you're watching this in the future, things may have changed and you may have to down patch the run. But as of right now, you can just download the game through Steam and everything should work just fine. To go over some options real quick that you'll need to know, uh, we will be playing on easy. You could play this on a harder difficulty, but there's not really a reason to. Uh, on easy, you can have aim assist turned on for your mouse. It, it's a preferential thing. I personally do not like having it on, but uh, if you want to, by all means. Um, everything else here doesn't really matter. In video, I would highly recommend turning your gamma up. I have it mine set to 170. There's going to be some really dark spots in the run, especially when we go outside the map that gets really hard to see if your gamma is too low. I'd also recommend turning motion blur and camera shake off because they're just really obnoxious things. Uh, FPS limit, V-Sync doesn't really matter. Um, you know, obviously the more frames you have, the better it's going to run, but you don't need high FPS to pull off any of the tricks. Uh, for UI, you can leave everything on. You can turn things off, whatever you need. Once again, this is all preferential, but an input, there are going to be some things that you need to uh, to be aware of. One, turn hold crouch off. Do not have this clicked on. We're going to be doing some movement tech that requires sliding, and you just don't want hold crouch on. So as I mentioned before, I use some pretty customized keys. I use ESDF for my movement. Um, but other than that, the things that you need to have bound and have easy access to are going to be your focus key, which is going to allow you to enter slow-mo for certain tricks and certain jump kicks that we're going to do. You need to know what your cloak button is. We barely ever use it. There's one spot once we get to the Jorvik Castle level that you will want to use this, but other than that, it's not super important. You'll also want to make sure you have melee bound to a very accessible key. And lastly, you want to have both your slide button and your crouch button bound to easily accessible keys as well. Slide and crouch are a little bit different, but they're also the same in certain ways. So if you're running forward and you hit slide or crouch, they're both going to do a slide, but they also have some different properties that we'll talk about once we get into the run. So you want to make sure you have both of these bound. There's no right way to bind these, just whatever is your preference, whatever feels best for you. Also having grenade be somewhat accessible is kind of nice. Uh, flashlight and stuff, you know, just find keys that work for you. You can do a couple runs and if you want to change them, just go for it. Uh, anyways, once you have this stuff bound, before you start any run, you want to go into your options. And for verification purposes, for new game runs specifically, if you're doing new game plus runs, you don't have to do this. Uh, you want to show yourself deleting all save data. So whenever you click this, it's going to give you this message. You have to wait 10 seconds to delete it. In order to submit your runs to speedrun.com and the leaderboards, uh, you need to show yourself deleting the save data so that the mods know that you don't have any cheats unlocked still or any progress within the game. So once again, if you're going to submit the runs to the leaderboards, Make sure you at least include this uh, on all of your VODs. So once you've deleted this, you go back to the screen and you can click start new game. It's going to click on easy. We'll go into it. Now, once you press any key here to start it, if you have live split set up automatically to split for you, this will run and will start. Uh, I think right now only the Steam version is supported through live split. So if you're playing on another version, you'll have to start it manually. Uh, but once we hop into this, you want to hit escape and skip cutscene. From here, it's pretty easy. You're just going to walk forward. For about the first minute and a half, there's not really a lot that we can do. We don't have any of our movement tech, so just head left. So just going to follow the path. And then once we get past the first minute and a half, when we get our gun back, we're going to take a little bit of time to discuss the movement options and the, uh, the different techniques available to us. So just head through here. Crouch into the grate. You don't need to be worried about any of the enemies. They won't catch you. If you want to, when you get up here, you can cloak. It's 100% not necessary. Uh, if you're fast enough, the enemies just won't catch you. They won't kill you. 
Playing on easy, so you won't really take damage, but you can cloak if you want to. Just keep going past them. So as I'm walking through here, you may notice in the top left-hand corner, I have a whole lot of text. And that's just because I have a trainer running that's going to allow me to showcase some of the triggers and some of the collision uh, later on the run. You cannot use the actual trainer during runs, but if you want to practice it, uh, you can use it. It'll let you like make certain save spots. You can see the triggers yourself. Uh, and, I'll link, and I'll link that down in the comments below, as well as in the description. So if that's something that interests you, uh, you can go and get that installed. It's pretty easy. But for actual runs, make sure to have that turned off. Just keep on going through here. Now you can hit use to open this door. You can run into it. I like to hit use just a little bit further away. And this is the first little trick. So once you get to like the edge of this chair, you can start picking up. Uh, you can unlock your restraints and pick up the gun. Before you pick these up, crouch. And then pick it up. This is going to allow you to skip the uh, animation of reloading the gun. I don't like the spam use here, so I'll use, use once. And then once it's back to this, I'll hit it again. And then you want to hit your slide button to slide back towards the door. Uh, so you just crouch, use when it comes back, hit use again, slide to the gate. Pop the lock. A lot of people like to spam a couple of times because you don't always hit this if you're moving fast. If you're just, whoop, you're just going to shoot a couple times, run forward, and then spam jump over these, uh, shoot at this lock. And we're going to talk about movement here in just a second. But uh, you want to be hitting your slide button. So if you look at my input display, Nine is my dedicated slide. I have crouch on control, which is actually a mouse button for me. Um, but if you see me hit nine, that's just hitting my slide button. But you don't have to be holding anything else. You'll just slide forward. Uh, if you're running and you hit control, it's going to do the same thing, but it's got a little bit different properties. Uh, so I'm just sliding through here. And then you need to make sure you have enough stamina, which is the white bar at the bottom, to slide underneath this because you can't run into it. Uh, this is like the slide tutorial, so... I tend to slide a couple of times, slide around the corner, and then I walk here. Uh, because if you're sprinting, it's going to use stamina as well. So walk forward, slide. Uh, you don't want to like slide and then try to hop over this because you'll go flying. Just kind of slide, wait for a second, and hop over here. Slide, jump, and then here we're going to talk about some movement tech. Before we go any further, because this is a pretty decent spot to get used to it. Um, and it's stuff that you're going to have to work on throughout the run. I'm not really going to be talking too much about like how we're going to use movement throughout the um the level and further levels beyond there but uh it's something you have to kind of experiment and see what works for you or watch another runner and kind of see what they do so for the most part what you want to do when you have stamina is you want to slide jump you don't want the slide to fully play out you kind of lose some speed um you get a big burst of speed when you slide and then you kind of maintain that with a slide jump so you can usually get two slide jumps in per stamina bar Whenever you have the clearance to do so, this is typically what you want to do. Uh, you can mix focus in here, which we don't currently have. Once we have that and have a good spot to show it, uh, you can kind of use that to extend your stamina bar indefinitely. Uh, but for the most part, you want to be slide jumping. Now, there are some certain instances where you're not going to have the height or you're going to be navigating corners really, really quickly where slide jumping is going to take you way past it. So if you're trying to get past here, you can't really slide jump too well. Uh, so in that case, what you want to do is spam crouch slides so hold forward shift and then like um not spam as fast as you can because then you're just going to kind of get into the crouch state but uh you're going to get out of that slide before it starts slowing you down by just hitting control again to stand up and this is like kind of the secondary method i think if you do it perfectly it is a little bit faster than um crouch or like slide jumps but it's, uh, it's kind of hard to do that perfectly. So, when available, slide jump. When not available, slide cancel. Uh, once again, there's some other spots where we have more stamina where things kind of differ, but um, this is the big trick of the game. This allows for all of the out of bounds and all the cool skips to happen. This is a, a kick boost, a jump kick, whatever you want to call it. Uh, essentially, it looks like this. And it's a little bit tricky to do, but because you have to do it so much throughout the run and for all of the tricks, uh, you'll get it down within a couple of runs. Um, I think it took me like five or six runs, and I felt really comfortable doing pretty much all the tricks. It just kind of took some time to chain them all together. So 
the way this works is you want to be holding down shift and you want to have some momentum because if you just jump you're just gonna do a single kick you want to have a double kick for this to work um, and that requires holding down shift because if you run forward um, or you do a jump slide out of it you're just gonna do a single kick you want the double kick and whenever you kick the floor or the wall your momentum is put 180 from wherever you kick. So we're kicking straight into the ground. We're going to go straight up into there. If we kick straight into this wall, we're going to go 180 uh, this way. So if we want to jump up on top of this railing, we want to kick basically into the floor at like a 45 degree angle, maybe a little less, and get you up here. Now this is dependent on momentum. The more momentum you have, the bigger of a boost you'll get. So you're redirecting all of your speed the opposite way. Uh, for this, all you have to do is run forward, jump, and then kick back behind you that works pretty well for here but there's gonna be other spots where you need more momentum you can also do a uh, slide jump and then kick that works as well I uh, will talk about some other ones down the line but uh, once you get up here you also want to mantle you want to hit space you're not gonna mantle automatically so if you just kick up here you know it's gonna be stuck on this trail so anytime I'm doing something like this I tend to hit space a lot there are some instances where spamming is really bad because if you have the clearance, which we don't really hear, uh, and you mantle over it and you're still spamming space, you're going to carry that momentum and do another jump and go flying off. And if you're doing something out of bounds, that could put you right into the void, which is a no-go. But if you want to just kind of get good at this for a little bit, you can practice this here. Just hop down, you know, wait for momentum to come back. You can try it with a slide. I wouldn't really recommend doing this out of a uh, crouch slide cancel. You, you could if you want, but uh, that's like almost never a thing you're going to encounter in the run. Just kind of do that. Um, so you're going to be doing this a lot throughout the run. There's a lot of times when you're kind of waiting around, like at the end of uh, the next level, where you can kind of just practice this stuff out in the open. And that's what I really highly recommend. Anytime there's downtime in the run, you're kind of waiting on something to progress. Just kind of run around, do some jump kicks, experiment with it, get comfortable. Uh, my favorite one to practice, one that becomes really, really useful, is to uh, slide, jump, and then kick, and then like turn 180, like channel your momentum backwards. That becomes really, really useful later on. Um, and another thing I'll mention about just the jump kicks in general is a lot of times you don't want to be like looking at the floor because whenever you go to slide, it's going to kind of change the way that you're looking. Um, the way I like to do it. This will be looking forward, and when I go to jump kick, I look straight down, so I kind of like flick. Instead of like looking at the ground the whole time. Um, kind of makes it difficult. I like to flick my camera down. And just kind of <laughs> do stuff like this. Um, so you're going to be using that a lot, so. If you want to practice it, go for it. If you just want to do it as we go through, that's also fine. So jump kick up here. You want to slide through that grate makes it a little bit faster and now we're going to be getting into um killing enemies and keeping momentum so i'm going to pause before they go any further every time you kill an enemy in this game or an enemy dies around you uh, you will get a giant burst of stamina you'll see a yellow bar over top of it um and anytime you really have a yellow bar of stamina you can do a lot of slide jumps or uh, the crouch slides for hallways like this level and kind of later on, once you get to Site 83 in the back rooms, uh, because you're in such narrow hallways with tons of momentum and tons of stamina, I'd like to do a whole bunch of crowd slides here. So as you're going through this, you don't really need to kill enemies for progression. But if you if you happen to not have a yellow bar, or you just see an enemy along the way, kill them and then just keep going for momentum. So you can see a yellow bar, and I'm just doing my crouch slides. Do a hop there. So I'm not going to like say this is the most optimal way to do hops here or crouch slides there. It's going to play around with it, find out, you know, uh, how you can get through here as fast as possible or pick it up from um, doing ILs or something like that. But now we're going to talk about having no stamina at all. Also, killing enemies gives you focus back, which is the slow mower, um, which you can see on the left hand side of the, the marker. The right side is your cloak, which auto regens. Focus does not auto regen. It only comes back when you kill enemies. And there are certain spots where you have to have focus to do certain tricks, because it's going to allow you to have more momentum for your jump kicks. Uh, but for a lot of areas, 
especially like this, what you can do is once you're out of stamina, is you can quickly hit focus and exit it. So for me, that's a W. So whenever I'm out of fo uh, out of stamina, I just quickly double tap that, and that will refill just a partial bit of your stamina bar. So you can be out of it entirely, and then when you go into focus and come back out, you have that. So if you're in a big open area and you're doing a whole bunch of slide jumps and you have focus and you don't really need it for anything coming up, you can just kind of spam that and then keep spamming um, slide jumps or uh, crouch slides. I find it really hard to do focus, uh, going in and out of focus as well, just doing crouch spam slides. It, it can be done, but it's really awkward for me. I tend to only do it with uh, slide jumps. It's pretty easy to go into focus and out of it as you're jumping through the air. Uh, this side, you want to jump up on the left-hand side. You can climb over this railing pretty easily. You want to do a jump kick, but if you don't get a jump kick off, you can just climb this stuff and then climb over the railing. I usually run out of stamina right about here, so I kind of walk forward. And I do a slide jump kick up towards this direction. Once again, you know, it doesn't have to be right back. Or, you know, this way you can, you can angle your kicks any way you want, so... Slide forward, turn 90 degrees to the right, and then climb over this. Uh, same for over here, you want to aim for this set of boxes, but you can climb this. Uh, there's usually a guy here you can just kill. You need to slide past this as well. Here I do a whole bunch of crouch slides. Uh, pick up the shotgun. So you can carry two guns at any given time. The shotgun is going to be your best friend for a very, very long time. It basically one-shots every enemy in the game. And we'll talk about uh, some extra special stuff you can do for bosses with it as well. Uh, so at this point, you should have the shotgun and the pistol. The way you swap between them, so with your mouse wheel, up or down. Uh, anyways, just continue on. You can just one-shot one of these guys. Keep hopping. So I tend to do crouch slides. Uh, I'd recommend not killing the first one because he has a shield, so it's a little bit annoying. I just want to continue onwards. Have to learn these layouts. This is a good spot to do uh, your focus recharges as so you run through here. And use the open door. And then once you get past this part, uh, you're going to go in a little cutscene where you see 105. A little bit of downtime, but you're basically halfway through the level once you get here. Nothing you can do to speed this up. Just gotta wait for it to be over. And we're gonna go back into killing some enemies. Also, if an enemy's in your way, you don't really need to kill them. Sliding is a good way to get past them because it'll instantly move them. Uh, here, you want to kill off the five enemies as quickly as possible. These ones, you do need to progress um, the game by killing. So let's go as far left. Kill these guys one shot. Make sure they don't get too far. And here, I like to look for the assault rifle. You can pick up the vector in place of the pistol. Uh, but one of these guys has actual assault rifle I like to pick up. And then once you've done that, or if you just want to go with the shotgun and pistol, ideally you want to be over by this elevator. Uh, the ideal situation is you keep one of these uh, one of these guys alive in the elevator so you can grab him from behind. It's not 100% necessary, it just kind of speeds stuff up, and you only get one shot at it. So if, you know, it doesn't happen, I want to worry about resetting, uh, you can deal with the, the shield guys in just a minute. Um, but... Hit use on this, and if you have a guy alive in the elevator, um, you can slide into him, pick him up. And in here, you want to wait. Uh, you can either see the slide tutorial pop up on the right-hand side. Ideally, you want to throw the guy with a grenade, um, whatever your grenade key is here, so mine's G. Um, and a good way to know this is when the lights change and you see some lights flicker under here. So lights kind of change and you see some lights popping up. I'm going to wait just a, a couple more seconds and then throw them. And you're going to see that slide tutorial pop up on the right hand side. And he should hopefully kill all four of these guys. You have to kill these four shield guys to open this door. Uh, one of them is alive at least. 
two of them were. Or three of them were. Um, once again, if they don't die or you can't grab a guy with a grenade, you missed it somehow, uh, you can just slide into the shield guys and shoot them with the shotgun. You know, if you don't have the shotgun shells, just assault rifle or some other means. Um, but we're going to continue on. So now we're going to talk about one last little thing before we get to the end of this level. So a lot of auto saves work very differently in this game. Some are just going through a checkpoint. Uh, some are time based. Uh, there's other ones specifically that I like to hit throughout here that are enemy based. So if you hit a certain trigger, you go th past a certain threshold. The game's going to check within a certain radius for the amount of enemies and the amount of enemies that are currently hostile towards you. So they've recognized that you're there in the area and they're trying to fight you. And if there's a certain number or it's over, the game will not give you the auto save because it thinks you're in combat and it's not going to try to save you in the midst of combat. So if you kill off a certain amount of enemies as you go through uh, and you get past that auto save, the game's like, oh, okay, you've killed off enough enemies. The fight's kind of over. We're going to give you the auto save. So uh, the first set of enemies through here, I don't really kill, just uh, kill one or two for momentum. But once we get into the back offices, I like to kill kind of two regular enemies, and then we're going to kill three spec op guys, which I'll point out. So do your momentum jumps here. Uh, there's going to be two shield guys, and then the rest don't have shields, so I aim for those. I'll just get him for momentum. There's some shotgun shells here that you can pick up. Uh, I get to go to the right. Usually there's an enemy here, uh, but I'm going to kill off two of these guys. So if you kill one off in this hallway, I uh, kill off one here. Slide through this part. Uh, as you slide pat once you get past this like um, shelving, this little cabinet, there's one spec up guy here I'm gonna shoot, one more to the right, one to the left. And if you missed a guy back in the office, there's a four spec op guy that spawns here you can kill. Uh, hop past this point. And do some crouch slides. You want to interact with this drone. And now you can speed up the drone by spamming your interact key as well. So I'm just gonna mash my zero, which is my use, get you past you. Uh, and this hallway is where you should get the autosave if you run down here. Um, I'm actually going to enable the trigger so you can see. Uh, this is where the autosave is, so once you get past this point. Uh, if you don't get the autosave here, your autosave is back by the elevator. Which is a little bit further away. Um, you know, so if you fail this upcoming trick and you load back there, just kill off some more guys, kill off one more extra. Uh, and then, you know, hopefully you do get the autosave here. So this is our first big trick of the run. Now, it only saves about, I think, like a minute and a half to two minutes done properly. Uh, but I would recommend doing it. It's not too bad once you learn it. And it's a good starting point. It's a good starting point for jump kicks. Uh, so when you open the door, this trigger, this yellow one right here in front of me, that extends from that side of the room to that side, this is going to close and lock the door. That is no good. If you hit this trigger, the trick is over, which is why that autosave is so important. Because if I hit this, the door is locked forever. Um... What we need to do is we need to get over this trigger, we need to unload this back hallway, and then get back over here so we can use this door as an out of bounds. Um, so it's, it's a little bit tricky and it's going to take a while to get used to, but um, once you get the hang of it, it's not too bad. So uh, focus is really important, don't spend too long in slow-mo. Uh, because once you get to the top, you can do the trick without focus, but it becomes much, much, much harder. And I'll, I'll still show you the setup for it, but uh, as someone who did that way for a long time and then actually got up there with focus, um, focus is pretty much first try every time. Without it, uh, you could spend several minutes uh, just trying to do it. So make sure to not hit this yellow trigger. Just kind of stay away from uh, like this line or over is kind of my visual cue to stay on this first paneling. Um, you don't have to worry about this music. So I'm going to do a jump kick. Ideally you want to land up on top of the shelf, but if you land on top of the door, that's fine as well. So do a kick and you can mantle up here. If you get on the door, you don't need to do another focus jump. Uh, you can just do a single kick and that will get you up here as well. So you just get like a little jump like that. Just jump kick and then uh, look to the left and climb. It should be fine. I will note that if you jump, if you try to do a jump kick too close to the door, you're going to hit this light and it's going to send you into the room. There's no good. Okay, now time for kind of a tricky part. 
you're going to use focus. You're going to slide off of this using your slide button, not a crouch slide. And then you're going to jump kick off of this pillar. And that's going to boost you back over this wall. Um, this is kind of like the first tricky thing you have to learn, just kind of the timing on this kick. Uh, and also don't jump off of this. Just go on the focus, slide, kick off of this. And you should land back over here. Once again, if you hit this trigger on the way back, this door is going to close and that's no good. If it does close, um, make sure it didn't just close on its own. Make sure it actually says locked. You can open it back this way and that's fine. Ideally, you want to have it facing in um, because it kind of just gets in the way. But uh, if it closes, just make sure it says locked. And if it does say locked, just reload the autosave and try again. It doesn't matter if you land up on top. It, it kind of makes it easier so you avoid this at all costs. But you can drop in front of this as long as you get over. Uh, and here, what just happens, I got an autosave. If you're trying this trick for the first time, um, what's going to happen is once you hit, like unload this last room, it's going to start a fight sequence here, which is what we're trying to skip. Once that fight sequence has progressed far enough, you're going to get an autosave, the one we just got. And if you've gotten this far of the skip, wait for that autosave to go through before you do the next part. That way you don't have to go through this part again. If you want to practice that, go ahead. Um, but the next part is kind of the tricky bit. And having the extra focus saved uh, is going to make your life a little bit easier. Ideally, if you're doing this as quickly as possible, you're going to get this autosave basically at the end of the trick. That's how quick it is. But um, what we're going to do now, you can see the enemies pop out. Also, if you've like failed getting up here enough, but you got the jump kick over and you're back over here, the door is open, unlocked, and you can see out of bounds and the enemies have spawned. Uh, and you have no focus left, you can try to kill them, wait for them to come close, kill them, and get your focus back that way. It's a little tip for you. Uh, once again, you should be very far gone by the time they come out when you're doing things optimally. Uh, what we're going to do now is going to go into focus, jump outside the door. This is all void, so if you fall down, um, you just have to reload and auto-save, you're going to die. And you're going to jump kick off of the door. Uh, you don't want to jump straight off the door frame because you're going to hit this door which is why you ideally want to have it uh, on the inside and you don't want to kick straight at the wall uh, at like this height you want to kind of kick down it's going to have like a 45 degree angle and then you need to get over on top of this door so I'm going to reload my last save so you have a lot of um, ways to kind of move in the air so don't be afraid to go really far out and then come back in. Um, you can mantle. Uh, the mantle for this is not where this gray line is. It's actually above it. Uh, but you can mantle this. So ideally you want to stand up on top of this. That's how much higher up it is. Um, you can go for that one as well. But uh, this is the more ideal platform to land on. Okay. So you've made it this far. Congratulations. One step further. Um, this is where you can use a lot of focus if you're not too, uh, not too careful. But once again, we want a little bit of focus left over when we get up top. So we're going to do focus. We're going to do a slide, jump, and then kick up to the roof. Just like that. Um, from here, you're going to look towards this post. If you get up here and you're kind of confused, let's look for the, the side of the roof. It's not the first pillar. Second one, second one up. So this is the magic pillar. Uh, right up there is a trigger. Let's see if I can get the whole thing. Uh, this is a streamer trigger that's going to load in the end of the level. <clears throat> I'm actually wrong. It's this one. This is the box that we need to hit, uh, which is why typically if you're looking up here for it. It's just not there, uh, which is why the train is kind of nice. You need to get all the way up in the air and you need to hit that. So the way you can do this without focus is to do a slide off of this. Sliding off of uh, height will give you a boost. And then you want to flick down, kick off that. See, it's pretty hard to get the height required for this. Uh, and a lot of times you'll just end up in that little slide as well. You have to wait for stamina to come back. And this is not really a super fun time. Uh, I did this for <laughs> many, many, many attempts, and I just hated it. Uh, once I figured out, I could just do this focus pretty easily. Um, I made sure I always had focus for this part. So you just want to go focus. You don't need to do a slide jump kick. You just want to go focus, 
jump, and then you want to kick off the floor basically like here. As you're approaching it. So you're coming up from the roof. Out of focus. Bop your head into it. Uh, and if you're facing away from the pillar, so this is the way we came up. Looking this way as we kick up. Uh, if this stuff loads in, you're good to go. This is what the visual cue is for once you hit it. So once again, you're not going to see the trigger when you're doing runs. So if you do kick up and this pops in, just run towards it. Uh, stay on the right side of this because the left side is kind of annoying to deal with. Uh, obviously, don't run into it, but you can just slide under here. Land on top of the shelf. Jump to this. And this does have collision. So the best way to deal with this part is just to do a slide. Just slide off of this. If you kind of forget and you jump, just turn around real quick and you should just land right back on this. Like, oh, messed up. Because uh, this is all void you can fall into. So just slide and you can slide back and bounce right here. here. Normally there's enemies here, but I think I hit some stuff uh, that kind of prevented them from showing up visually. But yeah. <laughs> There should be enemies here, or not enemies, but uh, friendly teammates. Just make your way up to the helicopter, hit use, and you've done the first level. So that out of bounds is pretty tricky. It is one of the harder ones to do. So if you've gotten that one down, you can do a lot of the other ones as well. Not much you can do here other than just wait. So every time you enter a safe house level after every mission that you do, you want to hit escape as soon as possible and skip cutscene. It's going to bring you here. Now you don't have focus here at all. Um, so still just use your... your slide jumps and your cr crouch slides um but just remember you don't have focus to kind of recharge that pull the lever and for the first one we're going to the right uh, i will say you can bop your head pretty easily on these little metal beams so if you're doing slide jumps through here just recognize if you jump you're going to smack your head um so i can slide past it and you need to actually customize your appearance just open this and close it uh if you want to you can go ahead and set the appearance. If you unlock all the stuff, um, you can set appearance to whatever you want. It's going to carry over. Even though you delete your save file per every run, obviously these are ones that I have set from a previous save file. You also go through the trouble of unlocking other cosmetics from just playing the game, like this pizza one. Uh, you can have this equipped, and when you reload, uh, you start a new game, and you customize your appearance, this will still get applied, even though it's it should be locked. So um, you can do that. There's also a way to implement custom textures. If you want to make your own skin, uh, you can ask around in the speedrun discord for that. Um, I don't actually know how to do it, but if that's something that interests you, it can be done. So just open this up, close it, and then head up towards the briefing room. We have a mission ready for you. So on the left hand side, you're going to see Pandora Institute. Click it, click launch mission, and then click easy, and then head back to the helicopter. So you can just kind of... Watch for bopping your head. Okay, continue on into the Pandora Institute. Uh, you start off in this helicopter ride. Once again, nothing you can do to speed it up. Fun little interaction is if you hit your melee key, you can see your shadow actually doing the melee animation, and you can feel your character kind of like shake back and forth, but the player model won't actually do it, which is weird, but uh, just something fun to point out. So right at the beginning of this level, we're going to immediately go back out of bounds. This one's a little bit tricky because you have to have just the right height at just the right angle. Um, and you do need focus for this um so if you mess it up a couple of times and you run out of focus there's two ways to handle this you can either uh, i guess there's three ways to handle it you can either reload the level and sit through all that you can run over here to this door which is going to give you an auto save which is what i like to do personally 
Now, if I mess this up enough, I can just reload the autosave and run back to the couch. You can also run downstairs, and there's going to be enemies that spawn that you can kill to get your focus back, but you've also just run past the autosave at that point, so I'd recommend just doing that. Okay, so let's talk about the out of bounds. We're going to go through this window. The glass being here doesn't matter. You can break it if you want to. Um, but we're going to slide off this couch so we get extra speed in slow-mo, and we're going to kick off of this floor. You want to watch out for hitting your head on this. Um, obviously hitting the beams is no good and you want to go really high up and you want to go a little bit to the side So we're basically going to kick right about here um, if we can help it A lot of times what will happen on this couch is you'll slide off of it and instead of just kind of continuing in the air You'll just go straight onto the floor uh, Once again, I like to flick my mouse down here when I do this or run off the couch flick down That time I hit the side And you want to go way up here. You can kind of cancel your focus early. But there's a big texture that extends, kind of like a funnel. That way when you drop down from the helicopter, you actually enter the spot. Um, that'll kind of keep you in. So even though you get past this window, there's still more that you need to uh, watch out for. And if you do this enough, you're going you're gonna to realize you're going to hit that part a lot and slide back down. Uh, it's rather annoying. But uh, once you've gotten up here, you don't really need a whole lot of focus from this point on. So if you've used all your focus getting out of bounds, that's fine. It's kind of nice to have some, so you can do some focus hops, which is the slide jumps and go in and out of focus, just to get momentum back. Um, but climb up on this roof. You can either hop over to this umbrella to get on this roof. You can um, come down here and jump off this. If you fall down here, that's fine. Um, if you've done this, I recommend just running down to this railing and then jumping back up on this roof. By the way, just you know, make your way down here. And now, I don't know if I can show this necessarily. Okay, there we go. Um, so this is the box that we need to get up on top of. The way to do this is we're going to slide off of this roof, and we're going to kick the ground about here and go up on top of this. So it's a little bit tricky. Uh, it's a pretty fun one. I don't do this in slow-mo. You can if you really want it to. Uh, I'd recommend just learning it without. It's pretty easy. I have a lot of time to deal with just kick up if you notice you're going too low that means you're kicking too far horizontally so if you're doing something like this uh, or if you're just sliding doing something like that it's not gonna work if you hop in here just hop back out happens sometimes if you're going too fast and if you're looking too far down um, you're just gonna go straight up in the air and it's not gonna be any good It is possible to mantle this box, but I think from very specific directions. Um, but yeah, once you're up here, let's see if I can get rid of this stuff again. Okay, well, I don't know how to get rid of it, so we're just going to continue on. Slide off of this. Uh, this is where momentum hops kind of come in. Um, typically, I do one about here. I'm going to drop down, and you need to hit a trigger that is right here. Um, so the best way to do this is to run off and then mantle this. Don't jump over it, because if you jump over it, you're just not going to hit it. Uh, so just kind of run off and then mantle. And you, you should notice a little bit of lag as you do that, which is meaning that it's loading in the next part of the level. And now to get back out, what we're going to do is do a jump kick. You don't need to do a slide jump kick or focus, just normal jump kick and land up here. Uh, this is void, so if you're spamming mantle, what can happen, especially if you're holding forward, is you will just go straight over... Um, into the void So just do one mantle and then from here if you hit jump again when standing perfectly still you're gonna climb on this do it like one more time um, Because what can also happen is If you climb up here, you're not always fully up here and if you start running forward You're just gonna fall in the void. So just do an extra jump Just mantle grab this the jump once and before you move on just kind of spam it uh, and then slide out here. Want to climb up on the roof, do some slide ops. Uh, if you have focus, you can do it this way. Uh, you can climb on all this stuff, it doesn't matter, but this is the optimal route. And then you want to aim for uh, on top of this door. You want to be super ballsy with it and just go for it entirely. You can just grab onto this, this, uh, this flooring. You can hop out to the right side of the door and mantle that. I'm not a huge fan of that personally. There's no safety. Um, 
And if you mess this up, you have to go all the way back to getting out of bounds from there. So I like to hop over here. Uh, you don't have to be super cautious with this. You do have a lot of room for mantling things. But I find it easier to do this than from a slide. Uh, you just want to walk off and then mantle forward to get into the store. Uh, from here, walk forward until you get loading and autosave. And then we're going to go to our first kind of fight sequence itself. Um, in terms of the fight sequence, it's much like the movement. It's something you kind of have to experiment with and find out your own setup. I don't really have this stuff optimized down to every little detail, but uh, I can share with you what I tend to aim for and what works best for me. So I'm going to grab these grenades. I like to throw one grenade at these guys. And the thing with grenades, if you hit an enemy with a grenade, it will blow up instantly as opposed to kind of sitting there and throwing um, the grenade onto the floor. It's going to wait a little bit before blowing up. So uh, if you're going to use a grenade for enemies, a very good way to do it is to go into slow-mo using focus and then make sure you actually can hit an enemy with it so it blows up. And do that with enemies around them so you're not just wasting it on one guy. Um, but I like to just throw one over here. Now what you can do here, uh, which I would not recommend, is you can put the breach charge on the door and then either kill these guys as it's going off but ten, uh, they tend to like run away, so you're, you're going to have to pick these guys off at some point, and if you let them live for too long, they're going to go to the corners, and they're going to be really, really annoying to, to kill. So I like to always kill them um, before I go put the breach on. Sometimes I'll leave one guy alive. Uh, if the music goes away, even if you hear noises, they're all dead. Uh, you can plant your charge. Here you can use focus to get past this. You can just hop over it as well. Um, focus if you're lazy. Kill these guys off. I uh, pull this. There's a grenade just to the right that you can pick up. A lot of times you'll pick it up just by hitting this, but if not, just grab it. Uh, now when you go out here, what I like to do is all of the enemies, if you've killed everyone so far, is they're all going to be on this right-hand side. I like to chuck two nades in here because they're in a very small, compact area. So doing that trick of hitting an enemy with a nade in slow-mo with other enemies around it works really really well here um of course i missed that one but and then you want to clean up the rest uh, if you see auto save that means everyone over here is dead and they're going to be spawning from the other side i kind of like to do the exact same thing for there so i like to go over and you can start to see these uh like shutters going up and enemies are going to run out if you wait too long uh, some are going to run out to the left, and some are going to run out to the right. You want to try to kill them all basically back in this hallway, so as soon as I get over here, I like throwing a nade. Um, and now, ideally, you don't go in the slow-mo for uh, a lot of combat, because the, the more you're in slow-mo, obviously, the slower you're going, the slower you fire. The slower you're going to kill the enemies, but um, it is kind of nice here to be able to take care of them all before they run too far away. The music's off. That means you've killed everybody, and there's going to be a breach charge that drops somewhere over here. It kind of changes per run. It's uh, not super specific, and if you wait too long, it will actually move a lot of times based on where enemies come down and stuff. Um, this time it didn't, but if you don't pick this up right away, it, it can bounce around. Um, just pick that up and continue to the door. Do slide hops. And now we have another big out-of-bounds to go over. So all you need to do is walk to the side over here on the left, and you're pretty much already out of bounds. You're going to get a autosave as you hit up here. Uh, and this part seems a little scary. It kind of took me a while to get used to going around this corner fast, but if you just like walk into this and go over, you can mantle this pretty easily. I wouldn't recommend sprinting, but if you just walk, um, you don't really need to like do any crazy strafes or jump out or slides or whatever. Just... Just kind of walk, hug it, and then you can grab over here. Uh, so you're going to do a simple jump kick. Don't need to be in focus or slide. Another jump kick up on top of this part. Uh, I think even just like a like a normal kick will do it, yeah. And hop over this part. There's a little bit of collision here that you're going to run into. Just hop there. I'm just going to do a whole bunch of slide hops. You should have a lot of focus from the fight, so just... Kind of spam that. Don't go in the void. Uh, and you want to... If you're going really fast, you can just slam right into this little pillar of the wall. Just hop down here. You don't have to run into this if you're just falling off the side. 
Uh, there's two different ways to do this. I'm going to show you the way that I like to do it. It's pretty consistent, pretty safe. And I, I don't think it's any bit slower. Uh, so you need to spawn in this guy's dialogue. And kind of like before in um, the other area, you need to hit this trigger. So you're going to run off and like mantle. And he should start talking. Uh, if you don't hear him talking, just run back over here. Try to do it again. Okay, so when he says unlocked for ya, once he's done saying that, you can slide off. The next part will load in. Uh, now my game's a little bit more bright than I'm used to. Uh, what I like to aim for is there's this line here on the wall. Uh, on the right side of the room, lined up with this corner. Um, if I line up my crosshair to be on both of these, when I slide off, after he's done saying that line of dialogue, you should land just about where you need. Um, so, if I can get it to show up again. So this is the trigger that we need to hit to load in the rest level. So we're just about there. Uh, if you go too far, you're going to end up in the void. And there's some holes here and there. So, uh, whenever you've landed down here, you should be, you know, maybe you're up here. Maybe you're, like, over here. Whatever it is. Just look for, like, the corner of the room where these little slanted parts are. Head for the corner, hit this, and you're going to notice this load in. So we talked about in the last level the uh, auto saves being triggered by enemies. There's enemies over here in, like, the cafeteria area that will cause the auto save on the next part to be a little bit uh, random, depending on if these guys spot you or if there's enough in the area. So to avoid that, we're going to jump kick up to the right, uh, land up on this and then, so this is the cafeteria area. Just kind of go around it. Uh, this has no collision here. This is a spot where you can fall down. Just jump kick back up if you fall down. Um, but you're just going to get used to it. Just jump. You can do slide jumps or whatever you may need. And I'd recommend staying to the left side of this, like, moldy goo stuff. Um, so the thing about this moldy goo stuff is if you're approaching from the side that has a lot of textures and curves, it's very hard to climb. Um, like this little mantle is not going to work. From the other side, it will work pretty flawlessly. Um, just to keep that in mind as you're running through here. I like to jump kick over this with like a slide hop if I can. Uh, so yeah, if you're trying to climb over this, it's not going to work too well. If you spam jump, you can do it. But if you're having trouble with this, either just jump kick over it. If I can even jump kick. Um, so you can sort of hear the enemies over there. Or you can grab onto this and uh, get over to this part on the wall. <clears throat> so because I, I kind of messed around a little bit and I activated the enemies, I might not actually get this autosave, but what we're going to do here is we're going to slide off, and as we kind of hit this wall, we're going to hit escape. That's going to hit a part of the map that's going to load in the rest of it, and, you know, if you didn't hit the enemies, you should get an autosave right about here. So as we're looking at it, this is the trigger that's going to load in the rest of the level, and this is the auto uh, auto save itself. So um, they're pretty much tied together. Hit one, you hit the other. But yeah, the enemies are after me, so I <laughs> didn't actually get the thing. This guy's out of bounds. I know he's not. Interesting. Um, so if you get the auto save here, you can go for kind of not really the risky strat, but it does go over the void, so it's a little scary. Um, but I didn't, so I'm going to show you the backup way, which, yeah, if you're getting into the run, it's not a bad way to know. Um, so I'm going to go over that first, and then I'll reload and show you the, the more risky way, the way that I do it. Um, so if you're going for the less risky way, you want to slide down here. And not fall in there. I just kind of make your way to the back left corner. Not all of this has collision. If you fall down, it's two jump kicks to get back up. Just... Don't worry about the radiation, it's not going to really do any damage. It does take a little bit of shield, but nothing crazy. Uh, and just make your way towards this back area. Uh, once you've gotten here, you can basically continue to the next part. But let me reload and show you the, the riskier way to get here. Alright, I'm going back over here. Got the auto save, So, uh, we can go for the quote-unquote riskier way. It's not really too bad, especially if you've gotten past uh, all the stuff so far. So this is all void, and you want to land on this metal beam. I like to do this in slow-mo, so I hit focus, do slide jump, and you can either just land on this, or you can mantle it if you've gotten, uh, 
Now a little bit shorter of a boost, and now you're gonna do another slide jump off of this. Once again, this is all void, so you want to grab onto this. Don't really spam mantle because it's very easy to continue momentum past this and go flying off the other way. And then I like to aim kind of where this makes a little triangle on the wall. Um, you can grab onto that. If not, all of this mold down here has collision that you can uh, land on, then jump kick back up top. Um, and then one final thing I like to do if I'm up here is run along the outside and then do a slide jump off this and aim for uh, this white part of the wall. Once again, if you drop, just, you know, figure out a jump kick spot to land back up over here. So no matter the, the way you've taken to get here, uh, the way to go about this is you want to do a jump over this void. And you can see this um, set of two lines. You want to aim for the left side. So what we need to do is we need to hit this trigger, which is just to the left side of that. Um, there's also a little bit more collision that sticks out here that I can't really show. Um, so if you get over here and the ele elevator door isn't open, you land it more to the right or something, or you just didn't hit this, uh, line up kind of on the left side of this, and you can walk, you can tap back, and then right as you drop, just hold forward, you can mantle back up. If you drop down here, that's fine, you can do a jump kick back up there. What you don't want to hit is this. Um, you want to hit this from the inbounds part, because if you hit this, what's going to happen is the next part's going to load and you can't get back back uh, you can't get back in bounds so don't hit this blue trigger just stay to the left you know the more left you are the safer you just want to make sure you hit this trigger uh, and open up the elevator door so you seem to do like we did before kind of back off of this and then mantle in and run forward and hit that blue trigger which is going to now load in this part and drop down congratulations you've pretty much beaten this level the rest is pretty easy uh, do your slide hops through here, use momentum, uh, or do crouch slides. Just continue progressing through this part of the game. You need to pull this lever, so do that. So here you tend to want to do a lot of um, these momentum hops. Uh, once you pull this, it's going to start a cutscene that you're going to hit escape and uh, skip over. And then what's going to happen is we have to do a segment of the game where we destroy these four generators, these two here, this one to the right, and then the one up these stairs. And the way we destroy those is we grab the moldy guys that spawn in and throw them into it. The best way to do that, um, I'm doing all of this now because once they spawn in, it gets really loud. I don't want to talk over it. Um, is you either need to run behind them, you can slide into them, and when they drop on the floor, grab them that way. Um, but what works really, really well is as you're sliding into them, if you hit grab, you can tend to grab them right away, like instantaneously. So you're going to do this, you're going to skip the cutscene, and then slide grab. Uh, that one went too far, so let's wait for them to come back down. Run in here. And I will note, it's better to get the enemies to come towards you rather than grabbing one from far away and walking with it because you're at a reduced movement speed whenever that happens. So I could grab one back by the third generator and drag him all the way over here, but it's going to be a little faster if they run towards me. Um, and once you've destroyed that, hop over the railing and head towards the way we came in. You're going to get this little Mothman cutscene and a chase sequence begins. Just want to continue on this way. It's kind of hard to do uh, the focus stuff up the stairs, but, you know, try your best. Kill off this guy right here. From here, I like to do crouch slides. Kill off this guy as well, if you can. And just spam crouches, go down the stairs. Um, and your stamina should be out right about here, and you can go back to doing, you know, your focus slide jumps. We're going to get another little cutscene. And here's a fun thing that you can do. It's not necessary, but it is smart to do. Uh, this is a part where you just have to wait. You have to survive. It, you can't kill Mothman. Don't bother fighting him here. Uh, you can jump kick off the floor and stand on top the elevator door. 
Uh, I like to do this not in focus. I just like to do a regular jump kick. Um, and most people are going to think you want to stand on the frame, but you actually want to stand a little bit off the frame. Um, so when you crouch, you should be kind of in front of it. Uh, the way this is going to work is once the elevator comes down and opens, it's going to check for a spot in front of it. And if you're in that spot, it's going to pull you into it. So if we stand right about here, whenever this opens, uh, the elevator is going to immediately pull us into it. Um, he's also not going to be able to attack us. He can hit you with acid, uh, but once again, we're playing on easy, so it's not a big deal. Another small tip, uh, small optimization for you, is whatever direction you're facing and how you're standing here affects how you come out of the elevator at the end of it. So if you're crouched, you're going to end up crouched, so be standing straight up. And then what I like to do is I like to look at the exit sign and turn 90 degrees to the right and face this way. This is going to put you right in the same direction that you need to leave the elevator in when it opens up. So once I've gotten up here and he's kind of stuck in place, um, the elevator comes down, I get pulled right inside. And now you have to kind of wait for quite a while. Um, and now we can talk about the upcoming fight. So the thing with the shotgun and what makes it really useful, not only one-shotting basic enemies, is that it has a feature when it has two rounds left, it has two shells left to fire, it gets extra damage. So those last two shells do uh, quite a bit of damage, and for boss fights like Mothman coming up, instead of having eight shells in or whatever it is, and we're just shooting those into them, doing a little bit of damage, if we have just two shells and we fire both of those, that should be enough to kill him with just those two shots, making it substantially faster. So I don't currently have any shotgun shells. There is a shotgun we're going to pick up up here. Uh, and we want to kill off these four friendlies uh, because it's going to allow us to get into the fight sequence faster. I don't exactly know why, but it was found to be that way. Uh, so you can see as we come up, we're facing the elevator. Get some shotgun ammo here. Um, and typically, if I had shotgun shells beforehand when I was on top of the elevator, I'd get this down to six shots. So there's four friendlies that we're going to fight up here. Um, and we're going to use one shot to kill all of these. And then once this pops up, we can run into it. Um, but yeah, I like to have two shotgun shells. Once we skip the cutscene, gonna run over to Mothman. I like to go into focus mode and kind of crouch, shoot for the weak spot, and two shot him. He's dead. Um, once this happens, you can skip cutscene. If you miss the shot or he goes and protects it, uh, whatever happens, uh, you can just reload and shoot again. You can switch to your other weapon and uh, do whatever remaining damage it has, but. Uh, the most preferred method is to sh two shot him with the shotgun and then slide back towards the helicopter. So this is one of the spots I was talking about earlier where you kind of have to wait around and there's not a whole lot to do. So it's a good spot to practice your jump kicks. If you want to practice getting a lot of height, you can actually get on top of the front here. So if you want to practice doing that, um, it's a good spot to kind of make sure you can get height for this type of kicks. This won't kill you. You can kind of mess around. It doesn't matter where you are. Uh, for this to end, just kind of make sure you're in the area. Uh, you know, practice your kicks. You can just sit here and do nothing. That's fine, too. But now you've beaten the second level, Pandora Institute. And we're going back to the safe house. Once again, just escape, skip cutscene. And this is a, a kind of a unique safe house mission. It's the only one that takes you to the basement, uh, to, the, to the giant bomb, so... Uh, instead of going to the right to select your mission, head over to the left, hop over the stairs and try to fall all the way down, slide through the doors, slide hop. Let's get over here as fast as possible. Uh, a fun little thing you can do is just hop into this left corner, for whatever reason it teleports you back to the middle of the elevator. Um, but now we're going to talk about this very, very small time saver that you get to do. Um, once the dialogue ends here, you want to be back in this elevator, uh, which is going to trigger it to end. But you have a little bit, uh, you have a little bit of leeway because the dialogue does take some time. So we're going to hop over, we're going to activate this elevator, hop down, run to the bomb, and that's going to start the dialogue. And we're going to get our way back up to the elevator as quickly as possible. Uh, we're going to do that by jump kicking up on top of this. And we're going to slide kick off of this. Land back up here. Okay, so if I run back in here, it's not working. Um, she's going to eventually say, now you know. And once she says, now you know, 
that's when you want to enter the elevator. It doesn't matter if you're in there before, run out, um, but you want to cross this threshold, uh, you want to cross this plane of the elevator once she says that. So now you know. If we try to run back out, it's not going to allow us. You're not super sure on the timing. You can just run back in and out and it should work. Uh, but like I said, you have a little bit of time because it does take her a while to say now you know. So if you don't get it first try, or if you just want to ride the elevator back up, it's not too big of a deal. It's the most optimal way to do things. Uh, don't mess around too much once you've gotten the elevator to start moving. Um, because you do need stamina for running back out. So you don't have focus to spam, so you just gotta let it auto-regen. We're gonna have another drone that we're going to spam use to get through. We're gonna go up the stairs. I just like to do slides. It's not the most optimal movement, but going upstairs is a little bit difficult. I do like spam, so I just do regular slides. Uh, don't forget to head to the briefing room. You do have to check the next mission. You can't go straight back to the helicopter. Definitely made that mistake before. Uh, you do have to come over here and select the Jorvik Castle, which is going to be in the middle of the map. Launch mission easy. And back out we go. There's never anything else you need to do in the safe house. You never need to go pick up um, weapons or the simulator or any of that. Just basically run to the briefing room, run back out. Now we're on to the Jorvik Castle. This one features a lot of combat, but it's not too difficult to learn. Uh, once again, combat's a little bit hard to optimize because enemy AI can be all over the place. I like to pick up this nade here. Um, so you're not super useful, but it's kind of the way I like to do things. Slide off through here. Uh, and once you hop out here, a lot of the enemies are going to congregate in the middle. You're typically going to have like two enemies off to the left side on this side of the arena and uh, like one or two on the right side. So I like to kind of go in the middle. Just kill off all these enemies. Um, the snipers can't help you out. Um, if you're missing an enemy, an important thing to do is uh, while the snipers may not kill the enemy, if you look at where their lasers are pointing, they're typically going to guide you in the right direction. So I can see they're looking towards this part and see that they're in the middle. Um, so our courtyard's clear. We need to set up for the next. I like to grab this grenade once again. Uh, you want to head towards this gate over here. So we hop down from there. It's the back left corner. An important note about these um, these enemy spawns is they're all hidden behind these gates. You cannot go into these areas. You can't go past these gates. And the enemies can hide pretty far in here. So if you're standing up by the gate waiting for them to come out, what will happen is the enemies will actually stay behind because they're trying to take cover and you can't kill them and you can't go in there to actually kill them and it just takes forever. So you actually want to let the enemies fully come out. So hide around this bush until you have enemies come down the stairs. It tends to be the best way for this to work. Uh, once two have run out, you probably have all four. There's going to be four spawns here of just normal uh, cultist. And then you want to turn around. I like to throw a nade up here to kill off some if I don't get there in time. You're gonna have three of these like fire bombers, these red guys, uh, to look out for. And then you're gonna have like one regular guy. So he's back here. Said if you uh, don't let them come out, they can just stay back there. And then the rest are gonna spawn uh, on the other side of this corner. So if you've killed them fast, you can, what I like to do is like kind of do a jump kick out, back to the middle, um, and then head over here. There's a set of supplies on that side. Guys are hidden. Uh, and once you've killed off the remaining enemies on this side, or if you've killed them off and there's one straggler here, you get the autosave. You need to head towards the metal as soon as possible so you can deploy the smoke grenade. Once you've deployed this, you kind of have some time to mess around and uh, collect some stuff. If you didn't get this grenade earlier, or if you want to pick up another weapon, whatever it is, um, you can do that. So you don't need the extra ammo that comes out of this helicopter. Uh, you just want to head towards this door. This is once again the sniper nest that you start in is the opposite door. I, I tend to like to get some shotgun ammo here. So not super useful, but uh, you have a little bit of time. So open this, grab the shotgun, and then uh, this will open. So yeah, you can see that you do have quite a bit of time to get back over here. 
And now we're going to talk about a trick that, for me, learning was pretty scary. It's kind of an intimidating one. It's actually fairly easy. Um, but it does have some void uh, that you can fall into. So the autosave back there is kind of far away. I'm going to show you the other one. It's not really great either. Uh, I'd recommend just going for it and learning it and practicing it enough. And if you need to reload from there, that's fine. Uh, but if you want to reload over here, you don't want to have to pick up the ammo and all that. Uh, there's an extra set of fire nade and tomahawk if you want those for whatever reason. Uh, this autosave is right before this set of stairs. So if you want that autosave instead, it's a little bit faster because I did, you know, Ultimately, it's not too hard of a trick. It is a little intimidating. Um, but once you've done that, either using that auto save or the one over there, as you want to come to the set of uh, like bookshelves. I tend to like the one on the left because it's the way I learned it, but the most optimal one is the right. Uh, either one works. It's all the same. You're going to go out through the skylight. You just happen to be going to the right. So if you do a kick boost and land back up here and then kick boost off this, you're going to be on the right side instead of the left. A little bit more optimal, so if you want to just go ahead and learn it from this side, that's fine. Um, but like I said, either way is fine. I, just, I tend to prefer it here. Um, you want a little bit of speed, so you don't just like jump kick off this. Not going to get a whole lot of height. You want to jump kick kind of out here. You can go off the pillar, or at least use that as a marker. Uh, I tend to just kind of go off uh, kind of in between them, kick up. And you want to land up on this banister, or you know, if you're doing it from this side, same thing just mirrored um so whichever way you're going this is kind of the hardest part of the trick honestly you need to jump kick off of where these lights are on either side um and then you want to go up this guy so once again i kind of like to do a flick down here uh, and you know i would definitely say this is the hardest part of the trick so if you can do this you shouldn't really have to worry too much about the void stuff um but luckily you know you don't really need a whole lot of stamina for this and you're not over void, so you can just take as long as you want to practice it. But whichever way you go out, whether you're going out the way I did and you end up here, or you end up on that side, uh, you're going to see this. Just head towards the right. Uh, you can do some slide hops. You have a lot of momentum in the air, so you can, if you want to, uh, I'm going to make a quick save spot so I can work back here, is you can just walk off and like kind of turn back pretty freely. Um, obviously, I missed it, but yeah, you can just walk, turn back. It's, what I have happened quite a bit is I'm doing slide hops, so I'll just land over on this part of the roof and then slide back. Um, you know, obviously you can just walk off the edge, turn back and do that if you're a little, little nervous about it. But uh, yeah, from the corner, you just want to drop down onto this wooden part, and we're going to do a slide across this gap. This one's pretty easy, you don't have to be too fearful of it. Just slide jump and then mantle. Uh, you can spam jump here to mantle, you don't have to worry about like overshooting it. And then um, also don't worry about, you know, this is fully collision. Uh, but yeah, if you see void, don't don't land there. Uh, anyways, you want to keep going forward. And I'll try to show you this spot that we need to hit on the wall. So to load in the next part, you need to hit this trigger. It is just barely sticking through the wall. And if you're just playing this, uh, you know, you're not going to see it. So the best way to go about hitting this is just kind of walk into the wall where this seam is. And just like hold into the corner. Um, just hold forward. You can just run. Uh, also, there is a little bit of missing collision here, which will go over a little bit of a, a fast trick you can do. No one at the moment does this. It's not too bad to do, and I'm probably going to start doing it myself. So if you want a little bit faster of a route, I'll show this in just a second. But uh, as far as this goes, I'm going to show you the old route and then come back down here. Um, so yeah, just look for the seam, hold into it, walk until you hit the corner. Uh, and then turn around. It doesn't matter if enemies here or not. Um, you can do slide hops. Don't fly off the map. Um, and then you want to drop down here. So there's a ledge over here. Uh, there's a flooring that you can kick to. You don't have to use uh, focus slow mo, but I tend to. Just kick on that. Hit jump. Uh, yeah, just do a, a focus slide, jump kick. Uh, kind of angled horizontally so you don't bop your head and then just land over here uh, from here you, you don't need to do a slide you don't need focus just sprint jump and then mantle don't spam don't want to fly off and then you need to do another jump up to here um, you can do this with a slide or without it I think it's actually better if you don't do a slide just focus 
run. Uh, make sure you get the sprint. The sprint is important. You need that extra speed. If you're not going to sprint, then do the slide. Um, but I don't, I don't, yeah, just focus, sprint, jump, kick. If you, if you mess up, just do that. Uh, slide down here, climb up the, the side. And if you get here and the stuff's not loaded in, that means you missed that trigger in the wall that we were talking about before. So you're either going to have to navigate your way back down, which is kind of difficult to do, and get back over there, or just reload the autosave. Um, anyways, get here. Jump here. You can either slide once you hit this part, because there's a little bit of collision, so you can slide towards the corner. Uh, or you can climb over it and then hop that way. Now what we need to hit is... This trigger along the wall. Um, so you're going to see that stuff kind of turn and transform. Uh, it does start here, but I, I like to run up to this part just to make sure. So I'm running just kind of do this so I see everything change, and then you're good to go. So I'm going to go back down and show you the other way of getting back up here real quick. So give me just a moment to hit that autosave. Uh, everything from this point on is the exact same regardless of the route. Okay, I've gotten back over here, and now the risky way that you can go for this is a little bit complicated and definitely scary. I want to recommend learning this just once you've done enough runs. We're going to do all the tricks without really having to worry about it, and you, you have the jump kicks down. Then you can start thinking about this. Like I said, no one currently does this, um, but I will probably start going for it because it does save, I think, 13 seconds or so done optimally. Um, the way it works is you're going to do a double kick off this wall to this platform, but this is all void. Uh, you can do this in focus, slow-mo, um, but you're going to double kick and go get over here. Uh, so it's a little bit scary, but not too bad. And then you need to do a um, sprint focus jump. Dig it up here. And then you need to jump up this way the same way. Sprint jump. And then you turn left. Uh, I did not hit the thing down below. Just by doing the trick, I missed the trigger entirely. But this is that same wall I was talking about before that you rub up against. So let me hit that again real quick. Run into it. Brothers, I heard something. I don't see anything here. Alright, so now I have it loaded. Then you can just rub up against this part of the wall. So once you've hit this, you can turn around. Uh, this is why I like to use this as like the marker, even though you can hit it from a little bit before. Uh, if you just turn to the left, you can see this corner where the collision uh, meets up. You want to go far enough out where you can do a jump kick up here. So I'm going to do a slide jump kick backwards, turn around, and then grab that ledge. You don't need focus for any any of this, just slide, jump, kick, turn around, and you'll be able to grab right up here. Um, so then you want to grab onto this platform, and the last trigger that we need to hit for this part uh, before we go to the very end of the skip is this box over here. So we're going to do another uh, jump kick off the floor. You can land on this. This is kind of fine to walk into. Uh, even if you turn around, you're like, oh, no, it's gone. You can just walk through this wall. Um, it is possible to like unload parts of this and fall back down, so you have to be a little bit careful, but if you've gotten this far into the run, uh, doing a jump kick over here is not the end of the world, so I just like to slide off, jump kick, and land up here. So you just need to rub up against the wall. You're going to hear him talk, you get a little bit of lag, and then you're going to slide off kind of in the same way that you came in. So that's the platform we just jump kicked from, uh, head off in this direction. So if you jump down here, you're going to see the room. This is where I initially got out of bounds, doing those um, crazy kicks. So I want to head to the right of that. You can see these two posts. Just drop down here. Once you drop down, you're going to get an auto or you're going to hit a loading screen. Do not go too far this way. It's going to unload the area and you're going to fall down and you're going to have to do the entire skip again. So uh, you can walk a little bit underneath this platform, uh, which is what I do because I get the load screen. Get under this and we're going to do a just jump kick back up. Uh, you don't need to do a slide one or any focus, just jump kick. Uh, just don't go just don't go too far. A little bit's fine. Um, obviously, don't 
cake off the edge. So now we need to climb back up. Uh, the way that most people do this, what works the best is you can do this and uh, focus. You can slide off this, kick the floor, and boost up. Uh, you can do it without focus, which works for me. Uh, if you land on this, you can also do it off that floor. Um, yeah, if you get like halfway up or something, you know, just like this. And you can land here and then jump up top. Multi multitude of different ways you can get up top. Um, just, you know, find some sort of jump kick that gets you up here. Use focus if you haven't, you need it. Um, but once you've gotten there, you can slide into this light. You're going to kind of see back in bounds and you want to fall through one of the lights. Now the strat that I like to use for the upcoming fight is I like to keep my shotgun, but I like to swap out my secondary for the bolt gun on the floor. It's going to make killing off the guys that spawn in by the helicopter very easy and very free. Uh, and the shotgun can take care of stuff at very close range. So uh, I think all of these lights you can fall into as long as you're like in a crouch state. So just do that. Pick this up. Should always be in the same spot right around this med kit. And then uh, head back towards the door. So before the helicopter spawns in for this fight, you're going to see a whole bunch of enemies kind of scattered around. They're not very consistent. You're typically going to have like two enemies off to the right along with uh, some friendly enemies. <laughs> along with some friendly fo- uh, Along with some uh, friendly NPCs that will kind of take care of some enemies for you. And then you're going to have some enemies in the middle. If the enemies are far away, uh, to the right, just use the bolt gun. So I like to jump up here. I can see two down there. And then I'm going to take care of the rest with shotgun. They killed that guy for me. So I can kind of see where they're shooting. So I know there's an enemy here. And at some point you should see a helicopter come in. Uh, so this is where I like to use my bolt gun. I like to wait to see the enemies kind of drop. Um, and if you have enough ammo, which I apparently was a little lacking, uh, you can kill all of these waves before they come down. If you want to see a more optimized version of this bolt gun, uh, you can check out the, the record I'll link down below, my 4537, in which I do this. And it's a little bit more clean, but uh, just kill off these enemies. Shoot the shotgun guy in the head. Uh, kills him a little faster. Just slide into the shield guy. Kill off any stragglers. Uh, and then swap out the bolt gun for the grenade launcher here that drops in this crate. Uh, sometimes this grenade launcher will get flung away. Uh, you won't always have this here. Most of the time you will, but uh, like a, a grenade or something can uh, cause that to get flung off and you just won't have it. It's not a worry if you don't get it, but it's nice to have shotgun and grenade launcher for the next part. Uh, you don't need to worry about having like low shotgun ammo here just you're killing off regular enemies so regular shots will do uh, and so we came in from this door we just want to go to the opposite door once the dialogue's up the next little section of the game isn't super exciting from a speedrun standpoint but um, it gives us a little time to breathe so just do your momentum get through here with uh, you know, getting rid of stamina So if you can, try to slide off of this railing uh, and not mantle it. Small optimization. Mantling is very, very slow. And if you can time it just right, getting a slide off, that's cool. You can get some shotgun ammo here if you don't have any. Don't worry about picking up that upgrade. Um, now there's different bodies you need to go around and hit. So there's going to be one here on the left. So as you run into it, you're going to get this like investigate noise. There's going to be one here on the floor. Just get to these as quickly as possible. Uh, and there's going to be one more on this light post. From here, you need to wait for this to be uh, interactable. Um, so just get over here as, as that's popping. Um, you can like stand around, but like it doesn't always give it to you. So just kind of like walk in and out, kind of like you would for the elevator in the second safe house. Uh, and once that's done, you need to head up top, but you can grab some stuff along the way. So there's grenades here on the floor, and there's another grenade launcher here. If you didn't get the one before, pick it up here. Uh, and if you picked up the one before, it's going, to get, it's going to give you extra ammo. So you should have four and eight for your grenade launcher here. Um, get some health and armor this way. And then, you know, um, once you've interacted with this body, 
grab that stuff as fast as possible, then get up here. You should have some time before this is something you can even interact with, but uh, regardless, just hold down use. And now you're going to see this downloading thing at the top. If you go too far away from this uh, helmet, it's going to stop and it's going to say you're out of range. So you don't want to grab this stuff after. Uh, that's why you grab it before, because it, it needs to actually finish downloading before it's going to start the next part, which is a little fight sequence we go through. So I can just stand up here and wait for this. Once this is done downloading, you're going to go into a cutscene that you can skip. So just be prepared to hit escape and then skip that. Uh, now we're going to have three sets of enemies. There's going to be one from the way that we're facing. Uh, if we're seeing the helmet, right behind it, this door is going to have a set of enemies. Just normal enemies, the, the gray cultist. Then the door that's behind us currently, it's going to uh, have a little bit more of the flame guys and cultists. And then we're going to have to go back to this side of the room uh, that we're facing currently to kill off the third wave. You don't have to do this with the grenade launcher, but because we already have it, it's a very good way to clear off enemies. The only thing you have to watch out for is the fact that the grenade launcher can blow up and send an enemy flying, but not necessarily kill them. Um, so if you shoot a grenade launcher and you think you kill everyone and you run to the other side of the room, but one's left alive, it can cause a headache. Um, the second wave won't spawn until the first one's dead. It's not necessarily the same case for the second wave into the third. The third wave spawns pretty soon after the second one, um, but the whole thing needs to be over as quickly as possible. So if you have a straggler, uh, you want to kill them, you know, as quickly as possible. So you're not going to have enemy spawn here until you get an auto save and they're going to run out. So this gate, once again, is kind of like the other gates and the courtyard fights. You want to wait for the enemies to actually like leave the section because if you stand right up next to the gate and they're running in, they're going to like stay behind there and make it hard to hit. So I like to kind of wait here. It also makes it easy to get through the little room we have here to get to the other side. So if you want to, you can use two grenade launcher shots per side. So I just kind of wait for some enemies to go through. Um, I find it kind of easier if I just use one grenade launcher shot and then shotgun any remaining enemies. So we kill off that side, wait for this to open, do that, any stragglers. So that guy on the floor is actually alive. Uh, I've done this enough to know that that kind of looked like an alive enemy and not one that was dead. I mean, that, that can very easily be one that trips you up. Uh, but once these guys are dead, so the third wave is going to spawn pretty quick. In fact, they already have. Um, the guy is dead. So music is once again a great indicator that the fight's actually over. If it goes away, uh, you're good to go. So head back to the side where the second wave spawns. And now we need to wait for the flesh golem to, uh, to spawn in. Uh, this is another spot where we want to have low shotgun ammo. So if you have eight shots or whatever it is, uh, just get down to two. Now you're not going to be able to kill the flesh golem in two shots, but we're going to get the extra damage from these two. And then we're going to reload one, shoot it, reload our fourth one and shoot it. And that's going to be faster than dumping uh, all eight shots into them to kill them. Um, you just kind of have to wait. You need to slide into this door as soon as this little square approaches and lands right there. So you can't skip this cutscene, unfortunately. It's kind of short anyway, so. Two shots, reload, shot, reload, and you should be dead. Blow up, and now you run back to the other side of the room. Got some time. I like to go ahead and swap to my grenade launcher once again, because there's a grenade launcher going to pick up along the way that uh, you can stop and make sure you really get it. Uh, but it's nice to just kind of keep an eye on the ammo count so I can see if I get, a, a, as I'm running past the grenade launcher, if I pick it up or not without really having to worry about stopping to do it. But we need to wait for this gate to open. If an enemy died in a certain way that they left some debris on the side of the gate, it's going to try to open up towards you. Uh, you can still run into it and open the other way, but it can cause a little bit of a headache just to watch out. If you see something on the other side, wait for the gate to open up towards you. But you're going to get to the scene with the Patriarch. You really are just Can't skip this at all. The question is, are you any better? So he's just going to run off. Now we need to make our way back towards the courtyard. Um, so 
once you get around here, I'd say wait for your stamina to come back because you want to do a sprint slide kick up over this railing uh, instead of having to go all the way up these stairs and go around that way. Um, it's the best way to go about it. So just get around the corner, wait for your stamina, slide, jump kick, mantle that. And then get all the way back out. So the grenade launcher we want to pick up is right here in this room. It's just on the left. Uh, so I have 4 and 12. That is the max ammo count. So if you use more shots up, that's perfectly fine. You don't have to have 4 and 12 here. Uh, I just kind of burn some extra shots in, uh, in the next fight. Totally not necessary. I think as long as you have... Uh, Maybe like eight shots, you're probably perfectly fine. Even less than that will work, but um, you know, the more you have, the more uh, the more you have, the safer it's going to be. So once you've picked this up, just hide. <clears throat> I'm just going to get over here. And now, sadly, we have to pick up the serum. This is the dual wielding serum that's going to allow you to hold two weapons of the same type. So you could have two shotguns if you want it. Which is something that we just don't ever use in the run anymore. It was viable to have the vectors a while ago, but um, we don't ever really need anything besides the shotgun we have now and the grenade launcher and the minigun later on. But you do have to pick this up, so go ahead and open it up, stab the serum into your arm. And now we're going to have our third courtyard fight, so... Uh, I use the shotgun for the regular enemies until we get the first autosave, and then we switch to the grenade launcher. So I'm going to slide out to the left, kill off any enemies I see. Tend to have those three in the same spot, and then you'll have like three or four over here on this side, kind of running around. So once again, kind of pay attention to where the snipers are looking, because they can help guide you to the enemies. That's not the case. Also look for your visual audio indicators. And once you get the autosave, head towards the giant pit. Um, so this is where I switched the grenade launcher. You're going to have your first round of enemies pop up in this pit. Uh, not right away. So don't immediately just start chucking grenades down here. What I like to do is I kind of like move my mouse around until I see the crosshair turn red. Letting me know that there's enemies down here. And I shoot one down. One down should be enough. Uh, once again, if, if you leave an enemy alive, there's like one down here, the snipers will tend to pick them off for you. And it's going to be enough to spawn in the next set of waves. Uh, so, uh, you know, if you're on this side of the room, uh, where we came in is from the left, turn around 180 and look in this back corner. Um, and I like to shoot kind of like two nades over here. And then look to the right side. You're going to have some spawn over here. Kind of space them out so you kill them. And then turn another... To the, to the next corner, uh, and you're going to have more enemies over this way. This one's a little bit harder because it has some height to it, but I like to shoot two up here. And then the way I go about getting up here is to do a focus slide jump kick. If I can, just to clear off any extra enemies. Uh, you can stand on this bush. If this bush gets blown up, it's not going to be here. Um, and you can jump on this corner of this little collision um, to get up top. I actually killed off all these enemies so there's a straggler behind from somewhere else. Let's clear them off. You know, listen for audio cues, look for the visual indicators, look for the snipers. Um, but once again, once the music's gone, uh, you have a little bit of time here. So we're going to go and swap out um, So now we need the bolt gun. There's two different ways you can go about this. I think for newer runners getting into this, you want to swap your grenade launcher for the bolt gun, and you're going to go shotgun, bolt gun. I think the most optimal way is to go uh, grenade launcher, bolt gun from here to the end of the game, but it's kind of a newer route I'm testing. Uh, so either one's fine. Just make sure you have the bolt gun. It's very important for the patriarch fight. Just realize that um, you're going to have to clear off regular enemies one way or another, and whether you want to do that with the shotgun or the grenade launcher, um, that's kind of up to you. For the purposes of this, I'm going to swap out the grenade launcher for the bolt gun. So that's that's the more traditional route. Um, so it should always be here on the floor. Uh, if not, you can get one down below. Don't worry about it. It's just kind of nice to go ahead and get it out of the way. And then uh, stand off of the platform. 
So we're waiting for an audio cue to pop before we uh, activate this because if we're standing on the platform, it's not going to work. So she's going to say kill the patriarch and then you're going to get this little priority uh, objective. And then once that pops and you cross this threshold in any of the directions, it's going to trigger the elevator to start going down. So just make sure you're not standing on it or if you are, just run back and forth. And then we should be heading uh, down into the pit. Not a lot you can do. You can practice your jump kicks if you want. You can see enemies fall down here and die. It's kind of interesting. Uh, you don't need to be super worried about knowing which direction the door is in. Uh, because you have to wait for it to actually go all the way down. And then you have a little bit of time before it even lets you cross the invisible wall. So you're going to have to open this up. And the reason it's nice to have the bolt gun already out and swap to. So when you go to pick up the upgrade here. There's another bolt gun on the table. So if I'm trying to um, pick this up, but I don't have the bolt gun currently, it's going to try to swap the weapons. And if I pick up the bolt gun, it's going to drop my current weapon here. And as I go to pick this up, it's going to try to make me swap back. Uh, but get your weapon part. And then head over to this crate. And I swap the bolt mode to penetrator. Very important for the patriarch fight coming up that you have this set to penetrator. Uh, you also get an auto save here, which is kind of nice. Uh, because there is a little bit of a risky strat you can go for. I'm going to show you the way I do this one. That involves using one jump kick instead of two. Uh, but I'll leave a link down in the description to uh, the double jump kick that you can do, which I, th I think might be a little bit faster, but it goes... Uh, but it's, it's way more risky, and I, I would not recommend doing it. Um, so I like to kill off one of these enemies for the extra stamina. So the, the riskier way is to do a jump kick off of here, up to the staircase on the left, then doing another jump kick up to the top. Uh, the way I like to do it is to continue down the, the path here to this staircase, turn around, and we're going to jump kick off this pillar. It's way more safe because you're doing this jump kick over a platform instead of over this open fire that will kill you and there's no way back up from it. Um, and this banister acts as a really good indicator for when you need to time your kick as well. So you're going to go focus mode, slide, and then you want to kick off this pillar and go straight up. So land up here. Let's continue up and then turn left and you can hop over this. It's kind of difficult actually to get on top of this or over it. But you can just run to the left if you don't do that. Uh, kill off this guy. I like to do crouch slides through here. Uh, you can slide off that railing if you're quick enough. I like to kill this guy for extra stamina. And then this is where Cloak actually does kind of become somewhat handy for the run. There's three sets of lasers. And if you're in Cloak, the lasers will not activate. For the most part, if you have full health, full shields, which you should as you're running through this, um, you can kind of tank one of these lasers. Tanking two is very, very risky, especially with extra enemies around. Uh, and sometimes the game will just insta-kill you when you're running through here. I'm not exactly sure. It happens a lot on the third laser. So I like to cloak. Don't even focus. Uh, go through the second set right here. And now um, cloak is going to run out right about here. So I'm going to kill these guys for stamina. Kind of wait for cloak to auto regen. And here's the third set that I like to do. Uh, you don't need to kill these guys. You can just hop past them. I'd say if you're using the shotgun, um, shotgun and the bolt gun combo, Reload your shotgun as you're coming through here, but swap to your uh, bolt gun when you're going into the fight itself. If you're using the grenade launcher, make sure that's reloaded, but swap to the bolt gun as well. So there's a cutscene. Just escape, skip it. Now there is ammo on the floor if you need the shotgun. Here there's a bolt gun as well. Make sure you have the penetrator attachment though. There's not a thing to do it in the fight, so really don't wait until this point to pick it up. Uh, there's you know, health and shields and stuff. Uh, make your way down towards the Patriarch. A lot of times he's going to be up here. Um, and now what you want to do with him, because we're going to do a, somewhat of a quick kill, we're going to do him in two phases instead of three, is we need to put about five, sometimes six bolts into his head. So you don't want to miss these shots. Because if you miss two shots and then you shoot him one time with the bolt gun, um, then you're going to get into a set of four, and that's not enough, and you're going to have to do three phases. It's perfectly fine if you do it in three. It's just obviously slower and not preferred. So uh, if he's teleporting around a whole lot like he is there when you're trying to do this, um, 
it can make it difficult. So if you're a little nervous, wait for him to teleport and then go in the slow-mo. Focus. Like that. And then... If you miss like that, you miss your first shot, just reload. Don't shoot him anymore. But... Uh, put three into him and he's going to face. So what's going to happen now is you're going to have some enemies jump down from the banisters on the left, the right. Um, and you need to kill enough of these to spawn him in once again. The way I like to do this is I like to run to the left and I throw some grenades to the right. So I'm going to throw a grenade over here. And this is where, you know, having the shotgun or the grenade launcher kind of comes in. Uh, you can also... Throw a grenade behind you to get these guys. You can do all of this basically in slow-mo, because you're going to get it right back. Uh, and you can see he kind of spawns in a little bit before he actually will appear in the map. You can see the bolt sticking out of him. Be careful trying to shoot him early, because he's moving his head up and down so much, and he might teleport that. Uh, if you try to instantly shoot him as he's spawning in, uh, you're going to mess up. But you just need to put another three shots into his head, and he should face, which is going to give you another cutscene that you skip. And you're done. That'd be destroy the castle. If for whatever reason he disappears and phases again and you go into the third phase, it's exactly the same. You have to kill off a certain amount of enemies before he spawns in again. Um, but he will also summon for that phase a flesh golem. You don't need to kill the flesh golem, just take out the regular enemies, the cultists, the fire bombers, um, and he should pop back in. And then you can hit him in the head with the bolt gun and finish him off. So, skip that, and you've now beaten Jorvik Castle. Skip the cutscene of the helicopter ride. Nothing special about the safe houses from here on out until we get to the very end of the game. Just do your slide hops over, get to the briefing room. And then you want to click on Site 83, it's going to be in the upper right hand corner. Launch mission, easy. Now, Site 83 is a pretty easy mission in comparison to the ones we've just done, so it's a little bit of a time to breathe before we get to Horizon HQ. You know what? You kind of remind me of the last guy I flew. Uh, never mind. So Site 83 is just going to drop you immediately into the action. There's no intro cutscene, so once you start the mission, be prepared to go. Uh, as you're running through here, you're going to have these uh, friendly NPCs in front of you. Uh, the first two are going to get in your way. So you can kill them as you're running. Uh, this is where the shotgun is really nice to have. If you have the bolt gun and the shot, uh, the bolt gun and the grenade launcher, uh, use the bolt gun for killing these guys. That's also going to give you a little bit of extra stamina as you're running through here. Um, just realize that by killing these two, you're going to make your friendly NPCs actually aggro. So they're going to start killing you. Um, if you're not fast enough, you can just go ahead and kill all of them off. It's not really a big deal. If you're kind of worried about dying, or you just want to practice this, just take them all out. Uh, and we're going to do our big out of bounds for the level right here at the start. Uh, so you can just do a jump kick up. You can land on this uh, rock and then hop up to this beam. You can just hop up to the beam itself. Um, you can even get up to this point as well, but I tend to just like to get up on the beam and continue from there. So, uh, whatever means necessary, get up here and then you want to aim kind of for this part where the pole sticks up. You can climb up on this, climb up on the pole, jump over to the pipe. Now we're going to do a uh, jump kick so we can get up on top of this beam. Uh, the way that I like to aim for it, is I like to kind of stand back where this pipe is and I like to do a slide out, jump, and then kick. Um, you can kind of look at the, the rings on the pipe itself. I like to kind of slide out towards this one that has a lot of light towards it. It's kind of dimmer. Uh, jump kick back and mantle. You're going to be in a little crouch state, so just walk forward enough to, to uncrouch. I've lately been finding this to be the hardest part of the entire skip. Uh, it's not too bad, but if you fall down, you have to climb all the way back up. So, uh, I like to go into focus and then I like to jump kick. I used to do a slide, but you just have to do a sprint jump and then hopefully not miss the kick, uh, up to this point. There's two different ways you can go here. You can either go to the left and do another jump kick over here, 
I find it easier just to go to the right, hop over here. Um, you can go around these pipes and head up towards this uh, spot where it drops off. So we need to aim for this shelving down here, but there's some collision kind of in the way. So let's head a little bit more to the right. Uh, don't be sprinting. Don't be doing tons of slide hops because uh, you can't just go off into the void. Let's get up here where the snow kind of stops. Aim more towards the right so you can see I'm standing off the snow. And we can just drop down here. If you land that way, uh, don't keep walking this way because you might fall off in the void. Just go left. And we're looking for this spot where we can see uh, like the concrete gray flooring and then slide down here. Um, if you land up on any of this, same for this corner. Be really careful once you get here. So we need to do a slide over to this section. Don't go any further down. Can't really climb up and you're just going to have to restart the entire level over. There's no auto saves between the start of the level and where we're going down here. So if at any point you mess this up, um, you pretty much have to start the level over. So once you've dropped from the gray flooring to this ice, icy snow patch, uh, crouch until you can kind of get underneath this. And then the best way I found to do this is don't even hit any directional keys. Just hold shift and do a slide. You don't even really need to hold shift, honestly, and then mantle this as you hit it. Um, that's going to get you up here. Sometimes if you're mashing, you can like fly over this way. And then you can like grab back. If you're going too far, you can land on this pipe. But what we need to hit is actually over here. This trigger, which is going to load in the part below. So just as soon as you get over here, you can just slide to the left. As long as you hit, touch this wall, rub your face against it, you're going to load in the next part. So... Do that, turn to the right, slide underneath this rock, or crouch under it. And then where we want to aim is uh, right over this pipe to the left of this part. Uh, this does have collision, so if you hit your head on this, you're going to fall into the void. Just want to sprint forward and then kind of slide off. So the way, the best way i found to aim for it is when you slide under here, wait for your stamina to come back. Um, you're going to be kind of in this general area, just kind of... Look straight in this pocket and then just sprint off. And you want to ideally land up on top of this. Uh, if you're holding like right and you do a slide just right, you can land up on top of this, no problem. If not, there's different ways you can deal with that. You can do a kick up the top, mantle it, uh, or you can just go around. Um, I would recommend if you land down here, just go ahead and do a jump kick up the top. It's going to be a little faster. But if you're not super confident in your jump kicks at this point, uh, you can walk around to the side, jump over here, and you're going to be on the other side. So if you've gotten up top, or you've landed up here, just jump across here. This is a spot where you can stand. It's fine if you drop there. Uh, but we're, what you're looking for here is this set of triggers. This is going to load in the next part of the game for us, this part over here. There's also an autosave that's not super important. Um, I think if you load this autosave, it actually kind of messes things up. So even though you get an autosave here, don't really rely on it. And then two ways to get back to where we need to go is you can jump kick back over, hop across, and we're going to be heading towards this way. Or once again, if you don't feel like doing jump kicks, you can run around to the side. Uh, you can <laughs> go across that way. I want to recommend it. Uh, the more preferred way is to just go to the right. And then, hey, you're back over here. So, once again, I recommend going over top, but if you're not feeling like doing jump kicks, uh, just run around the side. So, what we need to do is activate the ghost on the other side. Uh, be really cautious doing, like, side jumps and trying to mantle on this stuff. It gets really sketchy um, because the rooms are a little bit lower than the walls, so as you're sliding over this, it can kind of cause some issues. I would recommend not doing any slide jumps. Or if you're going to do them, do them from like really far back, really far away from these little corners. Um, I'd recommend just doing sprint jumps until you get like a really good time and you need that extra second or two. And then what we need to do from here is we need to sprint into this wall, which is going to alert the monster. So the lights are going to kind of dim, feel a little dark, and you're going to hear a noise. And then I... There's two ways you can handle this. You can either sit here and kind of wait for the monster to find you on this side, or you can hop back over and then hop over on this side. And you should see the monster flying towards you. Just kind of stand on this side of the room and jump. And you should 
I go into this. So you don't have to worry about being super fast once you get over there. Uh, the monster should just come and find you. So once you've gotten to this point, you'll have removed your mask. I think if you hit that auto save and like reload it, uh, you won't like lose your mask here, and that makes you just move super slow throughout the rest of the run. So uh, that's why I would recommend not relying on it. But hey, once you've gotten back in bounds, and slide this door really sucks. I like the spam use on it. It kind of opens it faster, but. It's not great. Uh, if you're trying to like run into it at the same time, is it like half opens? Uh, just <laughs> be cautious that this door does not indeed suck. So does this one. It's kind of the exact same. As your, if you just open it once and try to run into it, it won't really work. Um, and then be very cautious from this point on. Uh, the monster's gonna go down the hallway and back. And if you're sprinting or even walking it can find you very very quickly and you have to do this kind of um section of rooms once again it's going to send you back and you're gonna have to run back through here uh, as always if you've done things up to this point the same way it's gonna be on the same cycle uh so just follow what i do once you open the door, you can do a slide but if you're going to slide here make sure you start the slide from the room that we're currently in and not anywhere past the door frame. If you do it past the door frame, what's going to happen is the monster's still going to recognize that you've done some sort of some sort of movement and come chase you down. So um, just open from far away and you can do a slide towards this and then crouch. So you can see the monster start to walk there. Just stay crouched. And a lot of people will ask, well, you know, when I was doing this, I could stand up and walk. If you're far enough away from the monster, walking is perfectly fine, but that doesn't really work with the cycle that we have. Um, so we're always going to be kind of behind the monster. If we're walking, we're going to catch up to it and it's going to turn around and eat us. So just go down the hallway and go to the right. Obviously, if you somehow mess this up and you're on a different cycle, you're going to have to improvise. I don't have a route for that, but uh, once you've gotten past here, you can stand up. The monster's going to be far enough away that you can go through the store. Uh, this is where another section of kind of like Insight 14, you don't have a whole lot of clearance for jumping. So you're going to do a lot of crouch sliding. And there's some enemies here um, at the start that uh, once you get over this, you can start taking on. You can use the bolt gun on this guy. Uh, like I said, I would recommend just doing your crouch slides. I would recommend killing one of the two enemies here. That way you can carry that extra momentum into the next spot. Um, so once you warp here, uh, the door is going to be on your right. It's, it can be really confusing when you're going through these teleport segments to, to know which way to face. Uh, to know which way to face when you're coming through here. But this first teleport, just look to the right, um, and instead of going around to like the left, you can actually slide through this little hole in the wall right here. You can see this box. Um, which is a good indicator. You just want to slide into this. You don't want to like have your face pressed up against it. You want to kind of have this in the middle of your slide. So you have to kind of like work on the timing of it. But, um, you know, if, if you're doing it from too far away, you're going to stand up right as you get to it. Or if you're doing that, uh, you just want to do it right in the middle and you should pop right through. And these boxes just turn to the right. Uh, and a lot of times you can still even have a little bit more of the extra stamina throughout here, but this is now the back room segment. It's a lot of just movement, so you're gonna have to get used to doing your uh, your slide hops with uh, using focus and knowing where to go. So you go to the left. You can get really good at going in and out of focus as you're doing hops here. You're gonna drop down, look to the left. Going upstairs can be a little bit of a pain with doing momentum based stuff. But you shouldn't have to worry about focus. You should have plenty of it from killing those guys earlier. Uh, I would say try not to jump over this wall. Um, Cause you're gonna, unless you can mantle it from far away, you're gonna get stuck on it. And the only way to get through is to crouch. So you kind of want to just aim to the left of it. If you can remember that, hop over to the door. And I want you to get down this hallway. You're going to be warped back. And here, so be prepared for that. Go up the stairs. 
you can just run into the store. You don't actually need to hit uh, open for it. So I think what can happen is it goes to the other side and get in the way. So I would say you want to slide hop through here, but there's this metal beam right uh, right at the start that makes it really awkward. So you have to kind of run forward before you do a slide hop. And then um, trying to do like a crouch slide through here and uh, resetting stamina is it's very difficult. I just tend to just run through here. Hit the switch. Now you need to go to the opposite side of the room. So do that. Go through the door. And, you know, try your best to do some sort of movement option through here. And now we're going to come up to the little elevator skip. There's different ways to do this. The one that you'll see the most is you kind of stand against this railing. And then you're going to do jump kicks. And then when you do the second kick, you're going to crouch because you need to fit between this gap. So. Be a little tricky to learn. There's this kind of a, a rhythm to it. The getting up here. Uh, and then we'll talk about what you do once you get past this point. But you can also, if you can't really figure that out, you can do like a, a traditional jump kick. And then crouch to do it as well. Um, it's a little bit awkward, but it can be done. So once you've gotten up here, uh, there's a little bit of a cheeky way to go past the second part. So you're going to have another gate at the bottom of this elevator that requires the exact same thing. Either a double kick over like we just did to get up here or doing a jump kick uh, if that's your preferred method but it's a little bit more confined so either way is kind of hard to pull off but you can actually pause buffer in midair and then um, what that means is going into your pause menu and coming back out and then that will reset all momentum for you the reason this is important is if you're falling down here and you hit escape and then unescape and hold forward, you can get over this gate very, very easily and not have to go through any sort of jump kick uh, technique to get over the gate. The only way this is really awkward is you have to be able to hit escape um, while also doing this. My preferred method is to bring my hand off of my mouse entirely, my right hand over to the my escape key, so I like kind of overlap my hand so I can hold forward. Then with my right hand, I hit escape right before the gate. And after I unpause, I'm going to hit forward again and land right on top of it. Uh, makes it very consistent, very easy. Like I said, if, if you don't land up on top of the gate and you land down here, um, then you either have to do some sort of jump kick. I don't think you have to crouch for this one, so you know if you're really good at jump kicking, you can do that to get out. Um, or you can do the double kick technique. But it's not... A super fun time to do this, I would recommend just learning the, the pause buffer. Uh, figure out a way that works for you. You can use focus if you need to. I, whatever method you choose, uh, just make sure you can get over the first gate and then get over the second gate. Uh, just head up through the tunnels, turn to the right, the store is going to close. Try to go through it, so go to the right. Uh, once again, this is kind of a tricky area to keep using focus to reset your stamina and avoiding all the extra stuff um but just run up till this gate closes and then you need to turn around if you're going really fast you'll get past the spooky enemy that pops up and you'll land over there and you need to kind of back up uh, because that's going to be your teleport back into the back rooms <laughs> so once you're here you know you just got to learn where to go just turn left go through all of this so you're running through here killing enemies so you get that extra Momentum, the extra stamina. I burn a whole bunch of crowd slides. And then I go back to doing my jump slides with burning focus. Let's find out what works for you. You don't really have to worry about killing these enemies. Uh, because you're going to have to go through this, um, this animation. And then once you get to the end of this next hallway, this is basically going to have run out so you don't really need to worry about killing off these enemies they're not going to kill you um you can kill off one of these two spam some slides and then you know slide hop your way out of the back room so uh once that door opens make your way up to this window and then head towards this door over on the right hand side left from the window and then open it 
Now, my strat for this fight revolves around using grenades quite heavily. If you have the grenade launcher, that can also work. Uh, which is why I might bring it more in the future instead of the shotgun here. But the shotgun is also a very, very viable method. Uh, ideally, you'll have three nades here. A lot of times you'll just have two, depending on how many you've used previously on like the Jorvik Castle fights and whatnot, especially at the end of the fights. You can pick up one extra nade here, and there's going to be two more nades um, after the first little fight that we do for a total of six nades, which means two per elevator because there's three different elevators that we have to fight. Uh, for this thing to be over, so using two per basically guarantees that you're going to kill all the enemies without having to fire a single shot. Uh, but if you only have three, or if you don't have any, I'll show you kind of what to do. Uh, you're just going to have to kind of improvise. If you have none at all, uh, obviously it's going to be way harder. Um, but whether you have three or four here, I tend to have three. Um, go in and go up to the right. What we need to do is activate three different little sequences. These are going to be where the fuse boxes are. Um, there's also an elevator here on the right. This will be our second fight, so keep that in mind. You'll learn the layout of this area pretty quickly. Um, the fight's not super great. It's just more waves of regular enemies. So run up towards this fuse box. You're going to kind of hit this flare, and you're going to see these spooky monsters rise. Uh, the spooky shadow people uh, and just turn to the left so you don't need to go full into it as long as you start it hop over this desk and head to the right where this flare is as soon as you hit this you can turn around uh, every time you hit one of these you're going to go into like a little slow-mo effect so you're going to notice your movement speed decreases that's a good way to know that you've hit it uh, turn down you're going to drop over here hit this as soon as you hit the third one if you've dropped down in here and you hit this and you get the auto save you've hit all three of the spooky shadow people sections and you're good to go the first fight will spawn in if you drop down here and you didn't get the auto save that means you missed one of the other two and you're just gonna have to run up and find out which of those two it is but uh, once you've done this turn around and head towards a set of stairs and then the first elevator that comes down is back on this side so the way that i tend to do this if i have two nades um if i have four nades here i should say as i see the elevator come down i'm gonna throw a grenade right at the base of the door um, and I'm going to throw the other nade through this little gap above the gate towards the, the back of the elevator. If I only have three nades, I'm only going to use one for this fight because it's the first fight and there's not really a big shotgunner uh, which take a little bit more damage. I'm going to save my nades for the later fight. So um, if I only have one, I'm just going to throw it here. If I have two, I'm going to throw it uh, towards the back. And that should kill off all the enemies, but that's why I like to just walk up to it. You can quickly figure out if there's another enemy alive. You can hear them talk, yell, whatever, and kill them with the shotgun or the grenade launcher if you've brought it. Uh, you have some time before you need to go pull the fuse box. So from this elevator, turn around, kind of back the way you came in. And there's going to be two grenades you can pick up here on the right hand side. Um, so. From the mirror, you're going to the second area that you hit with the flare. And now you have to kind of just wait for this to become accessible. Uh, so that's why you have some time. Just hold forward, spam use. And then once you're out of this animation, we're going to go back up towards the first fuse area that we hit. Um, that elevator I pointed out to the right. So you can just go up these stairs. A little bit more optimal way to go up there is to do a slide kick off this floor and get up to this platform. Once again, you can just go up the stairs. Perfectly fine. You should have more enough time. Uh, head over here. Same thing. I'm going to wait for the elevator to come down. Grenade in. Grenade over. And this guy didn't die, so just shoot him in the butt. I also like to run through there to pick up some ammo for my shotgun if I need it. And now we're going to go down to the basement where we hit the third flare. Um, so you have some time to wait, so... Just kind of sit here, spam, use, and eventually... You should walk forward and hit it. And then the third fight's going to spawn. This one spawns in pretty quickly and the enemies like to spread out quite a bit. So as soon, soon as you hit this, head to your left. Go up this set of stairs, this set of stairs. And then um, I kind of pre-cooked that one, but that's fine. Two nades, kill off the enemies. And then back over here where that second fight was. A fun little trick you can do, you can just wait once again here 
for for it. Um, but you can do a jump kick up on top of these shadow people. So you have some time to go for this, so. You can climb up on top and get above this thing and then just wait for it to drop you. Spamming use the whole time. And you've basically beaten the fight. All you have to do is go fire the laser. So you can slide off at this desk. Slide jump, slide over this. And then fire the laser. Do be careful that you're not picking up the intel. If you're too far to the left or you're looking in the wrong spot, instead of using the laser, you're going to be picking up the intel, which is obviously slow. And you may not even realize it, so just make sure that when you're, you're holding down use that it's for the laser. Um, if you've kind of messed up the fight and your health's a little low, these enemies can kill you while you're doing this. Even when the cutscene's going on after you've fired the laser. So if you're very low on health, just go ahead and take the, the second or two to kill off these enemies so they don't kill you. But for the most part, you should be fine. They don't really do that much damage. And the fight's not super difficult, so. Just let this play out. You will notice one thing when you go into this cutscene, that the area from the beginning of the map is still loaded in. So we did that big out of bounds. Uh, we actually bypassed the triggers that deed loaded that area, so. That's why you can see that whole section on the left there. And while we're here, I should mention that there are some skips in the community that is known about, mainly for IL reasons, that you could implement into the game, into the runs, and one day they might make their way into it. The reason I'm not covering them is because they are bad shit insane to go for, um, and no one has even really attempted to do it in a full game run. There's a skip for Jorvik Castle known as the Patriarch skip. There's also one for the Flash Golem. Uh, once again, it's all linked in the uh, community Discord, so I will leave a link down to those things in the uh, description below. There's also a very crazy set of skips for uh, this level as well. So you can see the beginning of the level here. Using the grenade launcher, you can kick off of grenades and get basically where we are now, skipping the entire level, saving about six to seven minutes. Um, but like I said, it's, it's kind of an IL segmented only kind of thing for now. If it's something that you're interested in and curious about, you can check out the, the description and <laughs> Give it a go. Uh, one day it might make its way in. Who knows? But uh, for now, I thought I'd just mention it. It's it's kind of a crazy thing. Um, but from here, you've beaten Site 83. Just got to wait for the helicopter to pick you up. Back to another safe house mission. Skip the cutscene. Pull the lever and head towards the briefing room. Wish we could do more. I read over the debrief. Lots of crazy shit in your last mission. It's what Horizon to I still can't believe. So this one's gonna be on the left hand side. It's Horizon HQ. Launch mission easy. Go back out. This is really the last safe house mission you're going to do. The next time we come here, it'll be the end of the game and be very different. Which we'll go over when we get there, but uh the lever back to the helicopter this is another level that's going to immediately throw you into the action when it starts so as soon as the loading screen is done realize that you can play the game and you're good to go okay so here we are in horizon hq one thing you'll notice at the very beginning of the level is that you do new you do not have any focus so you're just gonna have to do normal slide jumps down to the end of this pipe um, so for this, I'm going to enable a lot of the trigger-based stuff, so that we can see. We want to get up on top of this pipe. You can also just go straight up for the collision, but it's a little bit taller and a little bit harder to hit. So, um, don't be afraid of falling into the void here. You can't really, because of the collision. Uh, you just want to stand on the railing. You're going to do a jump kick towards this direction. Flick down. Said so if you're just perfect, you can go all the way up here and grab the top of that box. But more than likely, what you want to do is grab the top of this tunnel. The one I just came out of, so you grab this. And now, once you get past here, it is possible to drop into the void. So you have to be a little careful on that front. Um, jump up to the right. And we're going to do a kick, a jump kick off of this part of the, the tunnel. We're going to go up for about right there. Uh, so if you mess this up, if you don't get the right speed, you can either try to land back up here, which is really hard to do. Uh, you can try to grab onto this collision, also hard to do. 
Uh, more than likely what's going to happen is you're just going to have to restart the level. But slide off this, kick up, and you want to grab onto that little beam. Obviously, you know, you're not going to have the ability to see this box. You know, this is what it's going to look like, so just know that here. You don't have to do any crazy jump kicks up, just grab onto it. Uh, and then the good marker is kind of like the midway of this part of the wall. You see like this beam. It's a good marker to kind of realize how far you need to be. And just get up on here. Um, so you need to crouch to get past this part. And if we go back to this, there is a trigger over here, which is going to be an autosave. I would highly recommend you pick up. We're going to be going this way out of bounds to continue. So it isn't really optimal to hit this, but you know, uh, once you've gotten past this part, it kind of sucks to have to redo. So just run down here. And a small tip I can give about hitting this is whenever you hit an autosave, the game's going to save your position on where you're based. So when you get up here, I'd recommend doing like a slide jump down. That was a terrible slide jump. Uh, slide jump down. And then before you go any further, turn 180. Because this is the way we're going to go. So it's nice if you mess up the, the autosaves facing forward. And you can like slide back into it. You can jump into it, whatever. Get the autosave. And then if you ever like mess up, reload. And so we have to figure out exactly which way you need to face. Hey, you're already facing that way. So it doesn't matter if you go left or right. I'm already on the right hand side, so it's the way I'm going to prefer. I like to do a slide jump and then grab. You can, you know, you can stand on this, just grab it, get down here. Be very careful mantling over this, it's all void. Uh, I mean, you can stand on some of this stuff, but there's not really a good way to get back up. So if you ever fall off, just reload the autosave. Uh, this is a pretty tricky skip. Horizon HQ is probably the hardest level in the game, combined with the, the different skips that it has. Uh, so if this one takes you a while, you know, uh, don't feel discouraged. If you've gotten this far, you can definitely do the skip, especially if you've done like uh, Site 14 and everything. So you just want to do a sprint jump over to this platform. Don't do a slide or anything. Uh, you can mantle on top of this, but once again, be careful. It's all void. You can land on this, but once again, there's not really a way up. So uh, do a sprint jump or a slide jump, I should say, over here. And now there's a couple different ways you can go about getting up top here. So I'm going to make a save with my trainer so I can show this. Uh, this is over the void, so that's why it's definitely sketchy and why I would highly recommend that autosave. The most optimal way to do this is to just get up top from one slide kick. Um, you want to make sure you have enough speed. Aim for like the left side or even at this line uh, when you just slide off. Look down and grab up here. Now, if you're not able to do that, you for some reason can't do that. I, I, this is the one I would recommend you going for. The other one's just as scary, but uh, you can get away with a little bit less of a boost. Um, slide here. Is you can kick up and you can get inside this little hole. So if you fall down, you're just going into the void. So I'm currently using the trainer to uh, just showcase some things. So if you get in here, um, you can get up top. It's a little bit tricky, and sometimes you'll just start sliding out on your own. But the way I would recommend going about it is walk as far into this as possible. Kind of look at this corner, hold left, and spam jump. And just really spam it, and it's going to get you out on the other side. And if you just want to sit here and practice, you can always fall back down. So that's going to happen a lot where you just don't get the height. But yeah, if you get here, corner, hold forward, hold left and spam jump. So it's not always going to work, but uh, once again, I, I just recommend going for the, the full thing. Might as well practice it and get good at it. So the, the way that works best for me is to really flick my mouse down when I'm doing those kicks. So I find if I like look at the floor, it's just gonna be kind of awful, but it can work. That's your cup of tea. So once you've gotten up here, uh, whether you've done the full kick or you've gotten in the hole and jumped up, uh, we need to head down in this way. So you can see that box over there. That is what we're going to be trying to hit. Um, but it's a little bit high up into there. We also don't have focus to do a focus kick. 
and as you can sort of see, uh, all this has collision. Some of it is off the platform, so it's a little bit risky to go for, but uh, for the most part, it's not too bad. That kick over the void is definitely the scariest part. Uh, we're going to do a jump kick up on top of this pillar. And the way I like to line this up is we need to go that way. Once again, you're not going to see this box. Um, but the way I found that works best is kind of stand in the upper right hand corner when facing towards this direction. Aim towards the left hand side, the lower left corner. And you, you can see like if I look right side, it's kind of in that same direction. Um, and it's something you're just going to kind of have to get used to. You're going to do a slide off of this, a sprint slide, and then kind of like we did in the Pandora Institute, just kick off the floor um, backwards and hit that. So because it's not all the way over the void, you don't have to fully commit to it. It's better to land on the grating if you don't hit it. Uh, but if you do hit it, what's going to happen is all of this is going to unload. Have no fear. Uh, when you drop down, it's going to load back in and warp you into the elevator. Like that. Um, so if, if you kick up and nothing happens, you don't see the, the map unloading. You still see that giant metal grating where you came from. Just try to land back on that metal grating, set it back up and try again. Um, so you won't be able to see that trigger as you're playing through the game. You just have to kind of know it's there and what to aim for. Once you've done that, you still don't have any focus here, so just do some slide ops. Um, I don't really have a preference. I tend to go more towards the left. I think probably to the right's optimal here. It's just if I'm doing slide ops, it's hard to like kind of change direction. So I just go this way, and then there's gonna be some enemies right about here. Uh, kill one off, and then you can just do you know, slide ops through here. Uh, so there is a mini gun here that we're going to want to pick up. I tend to drop the bolt gun for it. Before you pick this up though, you want to go ahead and put the breach charge down because you're going to have some time before this goes off. So what's happening, slide back over here, swap this out, uh, go through. I like to kill one of these guys off for the extra stamina. Just run past all of them and put down the breach charge again. Uh, if you're low in shield or whatever, you can pick that up real quick. You can stand right next to the breach charge and when it blows up it's not going to do any damage to you. So if you don't need anything for the level, just stand right next to it and then head to the left. Uh, what we're going to do is we're going to do a jump kick up to this area and we're going to be skipping this whole lobby fight. So uh, I like to do a focus, slide off of this, uh, kick, it's going to get you enough height to get up here. If you are trying this part, because it can be a little tricky. Um, and you run out of focus, you can kill off the friendly NPCs that spawn in. You can kill off a regular NPC and get your focus back. Perfectly fine. Um, you're going to do another focus slide kick off of this pane up to this part. You cannot mantle onto this beam. You can mantle onto this one. So what some runners will do is do a focus slide off of this and kick the rail itself and get back up there. It's a little bit too risky for me. It's like There's not really a huge benefit to it. Um, Unless you're going for the most perfect time, aisle kind of times, records. Uh, I'd recommend just doing it off of this slide itself, or this railing. Um, don't double kick the wall. Let's get up here. So if you can do that first kick and you've gotten this far into the run, you should be able to get up here without too much hassle. So this next railing you can mantle onto from quite far away as well. So you don't need to be like in the corner. It's actually kind of more detrimental to be that way. Uh, just back up, jump off, and then you can mantle this, like I said, from pretty far away. Uh, you can do a couple slides. You get down here, two or three, would be just fine. And now we're going to go for lobby skip, which is a little hard to visualize. Uh, even using the triggers and stuff, it's not really going to show us what we need to hit. The best way I have found to do this is to either have the shotgun, or if you've brought the grenade launcher here instead, swap to the minigun. Uh, that way you have a bigger crosshair. The shotgun has a really big crosshair, which is why I like to use it. That makes it easier to line up. You're going to line up the bottom crosshair just with the uh, splits and the screen down here. 
So you can see this is the bottom of the crosshair, split screen. Uh, make sure it's directly uh, perpendicular to it. And make sure, make sure you're looking straight down. You're not like looking out here, just as far down as possible. Make sure you're backed up into the wall as far as possible, um, holding down back or tapping back. From here, you want to look just very slightly to the left. And I mean, don't go like here. I mean, if you're looking perpendicular, just like uh, as slightly to the left as possible. Um, from there, you're going to jump and hold forward. What you should have happen is you're going to get a little bit of lag and then uh, the curtains are going to open or the, sc the screen it's going to open once you've landed. Uh, if you don't get lag on the way down, that probably means you did not hit the thing that you need to and you're going to have to do both those um, kicks up, slide back over here and line it back up. So if you are looking straight ahead, you're probably not going to get it. And if you look too, if you don't get it when you're looking left, that means you just look too far left. Uh, if you look just ever so slightly to the side, jump and hold forward, uh, you should get it. But that time I didn't get any lag. You can see it's not opening. So we're going to have to go back up and do it again. So if you need extra focus because you failed this, just kill off uh, a friendly, kill off an enemy, whatever it may need. Get back over here. Do a couple slides. A little bit to the left. So right there I experienced some lag. And it, it does take a second or two, so if you land and immediately doesn't start opening, but you got the lag, have no fear, it's going to open. And if you wait here for a couple seconds and it doesn't open, maybe it was just some random lag. Uh, but as soon as it opens, hop over here. You need to kill off all of these enemies, don't let them escape. They like to run away, so... Um, Kill them. Also, if you shoot one and you don't hear the sound effect, you don't see the X and they didn't die, really pay attention to that because they'll be on the floor. And if you're wondering why the elevator's not opening, um, which happens when they all die, you're gonna have to track down that one. And sometimes he does actually run away. It can be quite annoying, but uh, as soon as you use this, you can hit escape, skip cutscene, and we're on to the final skip of Horizon HQ, which is Kind of a crazy one. Uh, there's two enemies in here. You don't need to kill them, but, uh, you know, they can get in your way. Pull the lever and go back out. You don't need to have the minigun out. I just like to do it here um, because the minigun is going to be acquired at the very end of the skip. So just going ahead and swapping out before I have to start tackling the out of bounds and worrying about all the different skips and stuff. Um, I'd recommend just going ahead and doing that. But if you want to pull it out, right after all the skips, that's perfectly fine too. Um, so we're going to do a slide jump up here. Uh, I would recommend not using focus for that. Uh, focus can be somewhat important later on in the skip. You don't really need it for any of them, but there is one jump in particular where I think it really, really helps. Uh, and you need a little bit right here at the start too. So we're going to do a big slide off with momentum. Um, and where you can see this pillar and this glass pane, you're going to do a kick off of this up to these windows. All of these windows are empty. There is no collision here. So it doesn't matter which of these you go through. You just need to go through any of them. So uh, focus, sprint, slide, kick the floor. I think you can mantle those as well, but go through any of them because it doesn't really matter. And then uh, from there, turn left, go down the hallway. These little things do have collision, so they can be a little bit annoying. You also have to crouch through here because you can't just walk through it. Uh, and we're going to jump up to this point. So the, the best way is just to do a jump kick up here, mantle on top. If you're finding it a little tricky to get the height required from this, you're just kind of like kicking it to the ground or something, you can stand on this one and get that extra little bit of height, jump off of that. That's what I used to do. Um, and get up top. So there is void all around, so you have to be a little bit careful, but your save's right back here, so it's not too bad of one. You're going to a uh, slide off of this and a kick up, and you can mantle on top of this platform. You can't really mantle a lot of this, or if you can, it's, it's very hard to do, uh, so I tend to aim back for this part. And now there is a flooring that you can't really see right about here. And the best way I tend to line up for it is once I'm up here, 
Um, I stand in the middle of this first yellow section, run forward and do a slide kick off of like the front of that part. Um, you don't really have to worry about going into the void too much. Like even if you miss this, there's quite a bit of room over here to stand on. Uh, so you don't have to be too fearful of missing the, the platform and going flying off into the void. Uh, just get up here. This is where I think focus really, really, really helps. So if you've burned all of your focus getting up to this point, uh, once you've gotten out of bounds, I don't think you need focus for any of this. Um, the best tip I can give for this, because it is kind of tricky, is jump and then kick later than you think. Don't kick immediately. So we need to get up to... Uh, let's see if I can show it. We need to get up to this wall, um, which is a little bit high. And if you kick immediately, what's going to happen is you're going to get about here and the game's not going to let you mantle and you're going to fall back down. And this does have collision here, which is on the same height, but more than likely you're going to drop here and you're going to have to do uh, all of this part all over again. So um, let me return to where I was. So the best way I found is kind of stand at this uh, middle section. Go into focus, slide, jump off of this, and then kick later than you think. And you should be able to just barely grab this. Once again, be really careful not to like super spam jump, because you're going to go into the void. Um, it is very easy to fall into the void here, and there's really nothing to catch you if that happens. So uh, This is, I think, the hardest part of this entire skip is getting on this, uh, this wall here. So... To get onto the next part, which is this beam, you want to walk to the end of this, and I like to look a little bit left and then tap forward enough to where my crosshair is kind of between the edge and the wall we're standing on, and then do a sprint jump over to this platform. Um, just get up on top of this one, and now we have some annoying kicks to do, but. Uh, if you were practicing those kicks where I was uh, mentioning back in Site 83 of doing, uh, to get up on top of the helicopter, the sprint, or not the sprint, the slide forward, jump, and then kick backwards, and you turn just to the right, you can grab this wall very, very easily. Um, that's why I practiced that one in particular so much, uh, because I was having a lot of trouble with that one, and this is the exact same thing, so... Um, Luckily, I saved my position here. What you want to do is hold shift, slide, jump, kick, and then grab the wall. If you hop over it, that's fine. Uh, you can be on this beam. You can be on all of this. The annoying part is you have to do another one of those jump kicks. Um, so all of this kind of has collision. It's just how much you want to mess around with it. So just... Get back up on top of this wall somehow. You can use focus if you have it. Um, it's another good reason to hold on to as much focus as you can. Once you're up on top of this, you don't want to go too far back because you'll kind of drop in. You're not going to go in bounds, but you're going to drop off this wall and slide around to be on the wall. Yeah, you can use focus once again if you need to, but do another one of those jump kicks, turn around, and then grab onto the top of the room. What can happen very easily. Like, uh, you jumped over this and you fell over here, you can get back up on top of the wall. Uh, but if you do that over here, you're going to end up in this little section. You're like, oh no, how do I get back? Well, an easy way to do is come up to this wall, you can jump up here, and you're back up on top of this little wall here. I think there is a way where you can navigate over here, um, or something to kind of run around, I don't know. You need a backup. You can you can start looking for one, but uh, I think if you've gotten this far, you shouldn't have to look too hard. So focus if you need to. Let's get up here. Okay, so a thing to avoid for this part is this trigger right here. Uh, this will load in the final part of the game, which sounds great, but what's going to happen is it's going to lock you out from getting back in bounds. So. Once you're up here, head to the right. I'd say just entirely avoid where these little gray lines are. Just go over top the door. 
Uh, there is a bit of collision here you're going to have to climb over. You can see it from this side. So just hop over here, go around this wall, hop over this one. And then uh, you want to hit this trigger, which is going to load in the end of the game, but also keep you back in bounds. So this is a good spot, which if you haven't already swapped your minigun, swap through it here. Uh, hit this trigger. You're going to load back in. You're going to see something like this. Uh, head towards these stairs on the right. And this is uh, one of the boss battles. So if you play the game casually, this is the, the brain in the jar on the helicopter that flies around. And we get to skip the entire fight by destroying the helicopter over here. So all you need to do is rev up the minigun. I'd even start revving it up, honestly, as you're sliding up here because it takes a while. So like start back here. Um, and then just hold down, fire, just blast it. Don't have to be too precise, just, just keep shooting it. And eventually you should see like a couple of auto saves and then it's going to blow up and you're going to get primary objective. Um, do slide hops back towards the middle. If you need it to reload because you missed shots, reload, shoot it again. And then come over here and kill this guy. Just waiting through a cutscene, and that completes Horizon HQ. There's only one mission of the game left. It's a little bit tricky, but uh, once again, if you've gotten this far, you really shouldn't have any you shouldn't have any issues with it. Uh, but we'll go over that once we get there. So, back in the uh, safe house area, skip the cutscene. I'm going to pull this airlock, and you're going to go immediately into another cutscene. What's going to happen is you're going to go into another loading screen, and as soon as that loading screen is done, it's going to be another cutscene that you can skip. So, once this screen goes away, hit escape, skip cutscene. Another loading screen, and you're in the final mission. So for the final mission, they take away all of your previous uh, ammo, previous guns, take away your shield, and you start over with a pistol and no focus. It's a little bit annoying, but uh, it is what it is. The problem with this level, and the out-of-bounds that we're going to do for it, is that there's not really any auto-saves along the way. So if you miss the final trigger that is out-of-bounds over the void, uh, you will have to do this entire sequence over again, which is kind of slow because you're just waiting for enemies, but unless you gain control, head towards the door. Uh, don't waste all your pistol shots, but you can you can kind of draw some stuff. I like to do a smiley face, or maybe if I'm feeling a little sad, I got a bad run, I'll do a frowny face. Uh, you just want to be able to kill some enemies on the next spot. You don't really need to kill these guys, just sprint through them. Uh, because you want to get to the, this door as soon as possible. It's going to blow up and trigger the next set of enemies to spawn in. You don't really need the extra stamina from those guys, so don't bother killing them. Just make sure that blows up and then head towards this door. Uh, a little thing that you can do that's not really needed at all. Uh, if you look towards the middle of the door here, when the enemies are spawning in, you'll see a little bit of light coming through. Which means it's just about time for the enemies to break down the door because they just spawned in on the other side. And you can kind of get prepared to just start blasting because we're going to kill the first enemy and grab his shotgun. So you see a little flash of light coming through. Going to kill this guy, grab a shotgun. That's uh, going to give us a little bit of focus back. I like to kind of kill the enemies along the way as if they are in front of me. You're typically going to have one guy down this hallway as well, which I like to get out of the way because he's really annoying. Um, so there's not really any auto saves up until this point. We're going to go out of bounds right here. You do need a little bit of focus for the end skip. I'm going to show two different ways of doing this. I'm going to show the way that I do it and the way that I recommend going for because once again if you've gotten this far and you're comfortable with jump kicks it's really not that hard to do and uh, it's it's going to be better in the long run just go ahead and practice it uh, and it's going to be faster but i will show the, al the alternative the older way either way i think you need a little bit of slow-mo um, for the recommended way i would really recommend having at least one instance of uh focus slow-mo left so if you fail this a couple times and you need some more just run back down here kill off an enemy come back um, this one does give me trouble, 
the best advice I can give for it is to make sure you're not kicking directly underneath um, the set of rocks, which is where we're going to out of bounds. There's a hole up here. Um, make sure your kick is from further out, kind of more towards the light. So focus, sprint slide. And um, if you're going up and you're not going towards the left, you can kick off of this pillar to hopefully get over in this little hole. So uh, I still have enough focus, but just to showcase that you can come back here and kill one of these guys, get that back. So I'm going to kick off this wall. Doesn't always help, and uh, this is one of the trickier ones for me personally. So that was like too far underneath it. So you're, you should land uh, about here somewhere. Uh, and it's a little bit awkward to go through here. What I tend to do and what a lot of other runners will do is face back towards this wall, hold back and then do jump kicks, just regular jump kicks. And that will push you through. So I'm going to make a, I'm going to save my position here so I can show off two different ways. Um, I'm going to show off the way I prefer first, and then I'll come back and do this again in just a second. So you're going to fall down here. Don't have to worry too much. There's uh, quite a bit of collision. You're going to slide towards this platform in this giant chamber and land down here. Uh, from here, head towards these pipes and stand on the right of these two. So if I can show you, the final trigger that we need to hit in the game is right there. And if you're wondering what that trigger is, uh, essentially this game has a lot of what are known as kill triggers. That is you're running past enemies that aren't uh, required for progression. Uh, you can hit these kill triggers as you run through. And the game's going to be like, okay, you ran past this optional fight. Let's kill off all of these enemies so that they don't take up resources and lag the game. Uh, but this also applies to bosses as well. So by hitting this kill trigger out of bounds, we're going to be killing the final boss, ending the game instantly. Now, the problem this is annoying is because you're not going to be able to actually see this. And typically this water isn't here either. Uh, just kind of a problem with the trainer. So we're going to slide off of this kick off of these pipes and hit that final trigger over there. The way I tend to line this up is I look not straight out. Um, so if we see that's quite far back there and kind of more in the middle. So I'm going to look um, towards like the middle of this right pipe. The water makes it a little tricky to see. Uh, go into focus slow-mo, slide off of this and once I'm above this pipe, right in the middle, look straight back, not at any angle. So I'm basically here, facing straight back. I'm going to do a kick and make sure it's a very horizontal kick. Not 45 degrees down, not into the floor. We want to go that way. We want to go as far horizontally as we can. We don't want to go over the trigger. We don't want to go under it. Um, so it should look like this. Kick out. So that time we went a little too far underneath. So if you miss this and you go in the void, what's going to happen is you have to reload the, the autosave, which is the very beginning of this mission. So you're going to have to go with that long waiting sequence and kill the enemies uh, and go out of bounds again. But the other way that we're going to do it is we're actually going to drop off the top of the map and land down there. So we're hitting the same trigger. Just this one's a little bit, uh, a little bit faster, but potentially a little bit riskier. So, so we're gonna try this again. And if you get something like this, and you're not flying off into the void, you've beaten the game. That's where time would stop. Uh, obviously, if you press any key, it's gonna take you to the mission accomplished 106. This means that you've, you know, completed the game, and definitely show this during. <laughs> Uh, any run that you submit to the leaderboard as well, don't just end it on that final screen. But uh, I will show you the other way of doing this here now as well. Okay, so I've made my way back over here. We're going to be showing off the other way, the little bit safer, uh, a little bit longer route you can do. So you still want to drop down here. Uh, so instead of going this way, you're going to continue towards the right. I get around this corner. Up on top of here, around this way and down this path. 
So, if you have a focus left over, you can do a focus jump up on top of this. Otherwise, you can climb here. Um, kind of get off of that part. I think you might just have to do a big jump. So, um, just do a kick up. Land here, land on this side, doesn't really matter. You can land over here as well, but you're gonna have to get back up. So if you happen to go too far. Um, okay, that's the climb up. If you're down on that side, just climb up here. Uh, kick back up top. So from here, we need to climb up to the very top of this part. You can do a simple jump kick, nothing crazy, uh, and get up on top of here. So one more jump kick. The way I like to do this one, or the way I did before I started going for the other route, is kind of get deep in this part. You can't go too far. I guess you can't go too far. Um, you're going to jump kick off of this one. Focus again helps. Just jump kick up. Yeah. You fall down. Hey, guess what? It's perfectly fine. There's not really void to worry about. Just up here. You don't really need... Focus. Just jump kick down and end up on top made it up here you're gonna follow along this path careful not to get knocked back off otherwise you're going to climb up jump over here uh climb up on top of this rock the collision's a little weird here um but get on this and then uh this is where you have to do a very similar drop over the void as uh we did down below so i can get it to show There we uh, that's the same box that we hit, so you can see the pipes down there that we kicked off of. Um, so once you're up on this rock, you can get up on top of this wall. And I like to line up, um, so obviously you're not going to be able to see that. It's just with the middle of the pipes, down below. The water should not be there. I'm pretty sure you can see those. If not, just look for the rock in front of you. Um, sitting on this one. Where this peaks out, it's a good visual indicator. You don't need to do anything crazy, just like walk forward. And you should hit it. So either way is going to take you over the void. Um, and that actually killed me for some reason. Um, oh, yeah, it's because I just replayed the level, not from a new game. Yeah, that, okay. So that didn't kill me, that would actually complete the game. That would still give you the mission 106. Just because I had done it from a, like a new game plus perspective uh, is why that just happens. But yeah, either way, you have to go over the void. That one's like a little bit safer, a little bit longer if you want to go for that starting off. Maybe if you don't want to throw a run, you know, you're on a really good pace and you're not feeling comfortable going for that kick. Uh, but I would, I would highly recommend if you've learned all the other skips, just go ahead and learn that one as well. But that uh, would complete the any percent category for Trepang 2. If you have any questions or having any trouble with learning this, you can leave a comment down below and I will do my best to respond to it. I try to respond to every comment I get and if I can help in any way, I always try to. Uh, if not, you can always ask in the Trepang2 Discord, which I will also have linked down in the description. You can also go to speedrun.com, search for Trepang2 and find the Discord through there. Um, also in the description, we'll have a link to my personal best. Currently it's at 4537. It is the current record as well so if you're looking for the most optimal run out there it's not perfect but uh it will give you a good sense of how i do the combat and how i get through the levels with movement in terms of doing slide jumps versus uh crouch slide canceling and all that stuff if you want a good uh thing to study off of there's also il's that you can go and look at and see how people have done it to uh to the extreme um but yeah hope this helps if you end up learning Trepang 2 and do a run. Let me know what time you get. Always happy to see those kind of messages. And uh, yeah, thanks for watching. Hope it helps.